Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lava Falls AZ Podcast. I'm here with the boys, uh, Blade. Hello, that's me, make liveries. Eric. You know, what's good? And Jordan. What's up, y'all? And of course, me. Uh-huh. You finally got the intro right this time. Yay. Yeah, finally. <laughs> we did it. Jesus. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> um. <laughs> hey, don't worry. I'm not stoned this time, guys. I'm completely sober. <laughs> it's fine. I don't even care if you get high. It's, it makes it more entertaining. Well, wait till you hear the story I have to tell you all about last night. <laughs> Okay, go for uh-huh. it. Okay, so I have this. Uh, there's this uh, friend, friend of mine's band. They're a thrash metal band from Jack Speech called Crashes Down. I've known them since 2019. They're all really, really. All three of the members are really, really good friends of mine. And uh, they were shooting another music video. Now I'll link it to you all later after we're done with the podcast. But um, basically, uh, I was in their first music video last year. For their song 414, which was about Trace on a True Story here in Jacksonville, Florida, where a uh, <clears throat> where a teenager was found guilty of killing his mother, grandmother, burying her body in the backyard, and driving up to Canada. And uh, I'm in the music video, but I look entirely different because I had like a shaved head and a full beard, and I was shirtless throughout most of the music video. But essentially, what it was was just basically different shots from like different shows that crashes down at play. And, uh, this one, I think, should be the same, but um, probably not because most of it, basically, this music video, the next music video that was shot last night was inside of this small, run-down duplex that surprisingly costed 1500 bucks a month, which, in my opinion, if you saw this place, was like 1200 too much because it was a shithole, but it kind of fit with the vibe. Because everyone that showed up was all, we were all punks and thrashers and metalheads and stoners. And it was just, it was a vibe. But, okay, so, essentially, um, I, I was, like, trying to get, trying to ride to the show. And I got in contact with the boys and said, hey, can you help me find a ride? I, I, need, I, I don't want to miss this. I was like, yeah, man, we got you. So they called a different Christian, a mutual friend. I haven't talked to him in a while, and I've seen him at shows. And, um, oh, we got another person in on the podcast. Oh, wait, who just showed up? Oh, it's Telly. Hey, Telly Beast. Oh, my God, is it that boy? It's the boy. It's the boy to <laughs> boy. Shit, what up, boy? Are you there, Telebeast? Yes, sorry. I typed it on my phone. And then oh, I you're good. My... <laughs> we just oh. started the podcast, too, so you made it just in time. Oh, I, yeah. I didn't do what I was about, so I just want... Okay. Let me... Okay, so, basically, um... He, they sent my friend... They sent the friend, the guy Christian. They sent Christian to come pick me up. And, well, um... Before that, I had uh, taken a Delta 9 25 milligram gummy, and uh, I, I apparently underestimated it, because the only reason why I bought it is I, I, it looked like it wouldn't do much. I mean, 25 milligrams doesn't seem like it would do a whole lot, so when I got it, when I took it, like 15 minutes before Christian showed up, I was high off my ass, like throughout the entire car ride, I was high off my ass, and high throughout the rest of the night, so when you... You see, when the music video comes out, I will link it in the chat so y'all can see it. But keep in mind, every shot you see of your boy, I'm I'm stoned, but I'm having a good time. <laughs> you know? But, you know, it basically, it was just, you know, it was just really fucking cool to be in another, just to be in another music video, but to be basically the first, you know, Florida metalhead stoner to be stoned in a music video. I was like, Wow, I'm the first fucking stoned Florida Thrasher to be in a music video like this. That's uh, that's something I'm gonna be remembered for. <laughs> and um, it was it was actually really cool because you know, 
I was meeting all these new people, and you know, at the show, you know, we we were all having a good time. We were all moshing, and it was just like it was so crammed. The moshing room, we um, the room we all moshed in was basically like right next to the kitchen, so it was like all really crammed together. That's how much of a shithole the house was, and um, we um, we I we all got tossed around and pushed around, knocked around like pinballs in that fucking house when we were moshing, you know? That's basically how cramped it was. Usually mosh pits are pretty fucking big in bigger locations, but this... Ooh, this was a lot of fun. Especially when it's sitting here I was stoned off my ass. But, um, after the show, um, I saw this girl, this really fucking cute girl named Bella, and, um, my friend Christian, he you know, when he drove me to the fucking show, came and got me and brought me to the show. He um he wanted to go talk to her, but he didn't feel self confident enough. He's like, you know what, man, you can have this one. Just sh- just so you can give me a demonstration of how to talk to your girl. So I said, okay, bro. Hmm. Sit back, relax, watch and learn. You're about to learn from the Riz guy tonight, baby. <laughs> so, um. Basically, here's how I go about uh, approaching women. Just walk up to them. I say, hi, how's it going? My name's Jordan. Introduce myself a little bit, you know. And here's something I also like to do, if, you know, if I feel confident enough, too. This, is, this happens on certain oca- on occasion. I don't always do this, but, you know, I was like, uh, I basically held out my hand. I was like, hey, may I? gesturing to see if ask her if I could kiss her hand. Oh god, know? no. Uh, oh god, yes. And she accepted. She's like, "Yes, you may." And so I was basically also all at my after a little bit of talking with her, I was like, "Hey, um, I think you're pretty cute. Would you like to um, go out sometime and get some lunch or coffee maybe?" Well, you know, she kind of explained she was going through a rough breakup right now at the moment, and she couldn't, so, but, so she had to decline, but she was like, well, we could still be friends. I said, okay, that's fine. You got that in the friend zone, no. Hey, I'm fine with it. You know, she said she couldn't do it at the moment, which means there's a good chance in the future me and her could still do it, you know, after she was stunned grieving, which I totally get. I had just gotten gotten over a bad breakup. I completely understand it. You know? I didn't want to be with anyone else. I just wanted to fucking... I just wanted to be fucking depressed as shit. Take some time myself to fucking get over her and move the fuck on. That's what I did. So I get it. It's a process. You know? It's like... You know? It's being like detoxified. It's like taking a fucking shower. You know? It's a, take some time. You know? Hey, but, Blade... Blade. Say Halo 3. Halo 3. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. Whoa. (laughs) I posted posted a meme, (laughs) and it says when British people say Halo 3, it's Halo 3. (laughs) Boy, it's Tuesday now, isn't it? Halo free. Halo free. <laughs> Halo Gavna. Halo Gavna. Oh, I just wanted to test it out. You're, you're, you're good, Blade. <laughs> Thank you for participating. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm being an asshole. Um, it's okay. I'm finishing my story real quick. There's one more thing I gotta tell y'all. So, um... My friend Christian, after I got done talking to the girl, after, you know, she she we walked away. She had to go home. We all me we walked on over to the beaches, which by the way, the beaches are fucking beautiful at nighttime, especially in this time of the year. They're fucking gorgeous. And uh, I he was talking to me. I was, he asked, he's like Jordan, how the fuck did you do it, man? I'm like, what? It's like, how did you walk up to that girl? Well, well, man, I'm gonna tell you something. Women like it when a guy is confident enough to walk up to her. Now, not every girl is the same, but most women like that. You know, not, because, let's be honest, you're not going to get a fucking girlfriend if they're going to bite, 
sitting there hoping that they're going to come up to you. No, 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 no. They want you to come up to them. That's how it works. Women like confidence. You know? So, now, results may vary. You may not get, okay, I'll go out with you. You may get a, a polite declinement, and that's okay. If that is the case, just take it like a man. Don't freak out. Don't get upset. And just say, okay. It's, you know, it's okay to be friend zone. You know, what's important is how you exactly you respond to it. That's what you do is just say, okay. Midnight love advice from Jordan. Because honestly, <laughs> if you fucking freak out, if you start from a temper tantrum like a little fucking incel, she's not going to want to talk to you. You're, you're, you're done. You know, and the worst thing that can happen to you is that she'll fucking say, ew, you're a fucking creep. Get away from me. I know but it's worse honestly, than that. What? A girl leading you on and then it turns out that she's a lesbian. That, Chasing that, Amy. <laughs> that that's happened. That's happened to me before. There was this girl I liked at Walmart, and like I got a number, and I was talking to her, and then like you know we we were just talking, and then she was just like, "Yeah, I know you like me, but I'm a lesbian." I'm like, "Wow, you could have just told me that from the beginning. Like, you didn't have to fucking that's lead me a, on." That's just a fucking scale issue, mate. Scale issue. She wasn't even worth it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I was just an idiot at Walmart. Yeah, Walmart. I hated working at Walmart. Um, what the fuck is a Walmart? It's whatever you get grocery stores in Britain, but the American version. That's it's basically how most people would perceive America to be. It's Walmart. Walmart. Fuck yeah, Walmart. Fuck yeah, yeah. Walmart. <laughs> okay. Fuck All right. Cool. Um. So, I guess to switch in this next segment, because I don't want to talk about girls all night. Um, uh, fucking. <laughs> well, right, well, okay, fine, Blade, you take the stage. What, what do you got for us? Yeah, Blade. Have y'all played Hi Fi Rush? Hi Fi Rush? Yeah. The new. The new game that came out, Game Pass. Oh no. no. I've heard of it. Play it's a good game. This. It's a good game, you should play it. What are you doing it? It's like... It's basically Devil May Cry, but you have to hit enemies on the time of the beat. Oh. It's just a rhythm game, but you get to pe beat people up. That sounds kind of interesting. It is interesting. I heard, I heard there's JoJo references in it. There is a JoJo reference. I and think like an entire cat. I think Andreas, my friend Andreas, would like that game because he likes rhythm games. I tried playing this rhythm game on Game Pass when I had it called Sing, whatever it's called. It's like a fucking heavy metal rhythm game. I couldn't get it. I, I, I was like, okay. The soundtrack's cool, the premise looks cool, but I'm not very good at rhythm games. You know, just not my thing. Did you ever play Guitar Hero? Yeah, when I was a kid. But it's kind of like different when you're using an Xbox controller. You know, the fucking beat's like a fucking death metal song. It's like, I ain't no fucking drummer, what the hell is this? <laughs> Sounds like a uh, skill issue, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, but yeah, I got some interesting news. I just bought coilovers for my car. So those are coming in soon. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be able to adjust my fucking ride height to whatever the fuck I want to. So. Nice. I'm not nice. slamming it, though. Because, nice. like, I want to be able to go over speed bumps and... Slamming your car is not good for the car itself. It's like fucking stupid if you slam it. Like, no. <laughs> it also feels you like look shit. Dumb doing it. Or it's just you also look dumb doing it. It also looks fucking stupid. Wait, what? 
I said, or slamming it into a other car. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> or she slamming, or she slamming a car into another car is way better than slamming a car. Major slam. Come on and slam if you wanna drink. Yeah, once those come in and I save up a little bit more money, I'm gonna buy a new set of uh, wheels. Um, they kind of look like CM6 wheels from from Accelerators, but they're bronze. But they do have are like those a little. Ones the are those the one the Teku drives? Yes, the Teku and the drones, and the silencers. Oh. Um, but they're bronze, and in the middle is a red dot. So I didn't even make the connection. I just I sent it to Reese, and he's like, Haha, "CM6s." I'm like, "Oh my God, you're right. They are CM6 wheels. They have the red dot and everything." Like. They are six spoke, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, cool, six spokes, you know, whatever. But the red dot, I didn't really pay attention to until like Reese had mentioned it, because I wasn't even like looking at it like that. I was just like thinking, how would these look on my car, sort of thing. And then Reese made that comment, and I'm like, oh, you're right. <laughs> so pretty cool. Uh, and then at some point, I want to get like cat back exhaust system cold air intake um which su surprisingly some of the stuff i'm looking at isn't too expensive but like the coilovers i just bought were like a thousand dollars um and then a new set of wheels is going to be probably another thousand almost two thousand so a lot of fucking patience and work in progress basically right now and i've kind of just decided like i i I've been going to a lot of car meets recently with my friend's car group and they're all really cool and, and stuff and um oh my god is that oh my god <laughs> that's funny sorry I'm racing in Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero and there's an Accord that I'm racing against right now <laughs> and like it looks like my car except it's a previous generation so it's kind of Hold funny. It. Hold, Hold it! it. Spinebusters, Spinebusters, my car. Spinebusters, my car. Fucking uh. Nobody drives my car but me. Um, <laughs> fucking. Yeah, my. You know, I I've kind of realized that like I do want to put more effort into making my car look a lot better, and I don't really care, considering the fact that like I've seen other people's builds and. Like, we all don't make a lot of money, or some people do, and some people just do stuff that is kind of just whatever. Like, it doesn't fit a status quo. They just do whatever f makes them sort of happy. So, I'm just like, yeah. you know what? I'm just going to stop, like, trying to feel bad about my car and just be like, you know... Because, like, it, my car is slow. My car is not going to be a super-duper fast race car, you know... But I, I still want to, like, give it some performance upgrades to make it at least look like I, I've done some stuff to it so it's not just stock and stuff like that. So, you know, um, I'm definitely, like, feeling more confident in the fact that, like, I've found people that are genuinely, like, really nice and just, like, really laid back and aren't snobby, stuck-up assholes that are just like, Ew, you drive an Accord? Gross. Like, that's not a sports Ew, car. You you know. Honestly, yeah, Honestly, if I start driving, all I care about is if things going to get me from point A to point B without any problems. That's all I fucking care about. I mean, it would be cool to have a fucking car, like a favorite color, you know, and have it be like a nice sports car. But, you know, when I start driving, my car is going to be a fucking beater. I mean, isn't everybody's first car usually a beater? Eh, it depends. You know? My car was not. Yeah, it depends. Like, if you're fucking born into a rich burglar family, yeah. Probably not, but you know. Well, it's just like if you want a good car, buy from old people. Literally, old yeah. people. Old people barely drive shit, and old people usually have uh, nicer cars that are well kept. So usually cheaper too. Yeah, I got my Accord yeah, for no, five thousand dollars, and it had eighty-five thousand miles on it. Fuck. And I would love to. Hear Camaro like that from an old person for that much money. So I love Camaro. <laughs> um, what year? Um, I'm thinking my my dream car is either a '72 or a '74 Camaro. 
Like, okay. the one Bumblebee drives in the first Spade Forms movie. Yeah. Like, ever since I... When I first saw that movie and I was a kid, I thought that was the coolest fucking car in the movie. I would always thought... I loved the look of it. You know... And when I had the video game, I don't know if anybody's played the Transformers video game. I love that game. I'm going to start yeah, streaming I, that again. I just got to download it from my emulator. Yeah, I had it for PS2 when I was a kid. And I, I always loved going to, like, the first couple, first, like, three levels of Bumblebee. You know, where you're in that fucking, that fucking town. You know, and I would just, like, I would just, like, drive around and transform into the Camaro. But, honestly, not, it wouldn't just be yellow and black. It'd be, like, Nintendo. You know, with a black, with like a two black pin racing stripe going down the middle. I wanted to have like a, um, I don't know what kind of spoiler I put on it. Maybe the spoiler. And uh, the only mods I can think of that I would do to it would I would put like I would install 400 watt subwoofers in the back, and um, of course modify the radio or stereo system to have like you know auxiliary outputs and uh, the cassette. Set, be able to take cassettes and CDs as well, you know. So it would be somewhat modified, you know. And uh, um, what were they? Gonna, okay, so CM fives are the uh, Metal Maniacs cars, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I would make. I would get the wheels that look like CM fives, because even though I think Teku would be my preferred team in Acceleracers, I I prefer to look at the CM fives over the CM sixes in my my opinion. You know, I just think they look a lot more cooler, in my opinion. I don't know. Yeah, I've always liked CM5s more than CM6s. You know, but yeah, that would be my dream car. And if I did find a Camaro and I was able to mod it like that for not a whole lot of money, I would be happy. I'd be like, okay, this is it. I don't need another car. Oh, no, I, I think I would also get like a pickup truck for if I go to play gigs or something. When I start my music career, so I could put my equipment in the back. That would be it. I would just have like a pickup truck and my out of my '72 or my '74 Camaro that's been modded. And that'd be it. I would be completely happy. And if I also was, and also one more, if I also was able to, I'd have a fucking old Harley. I don't know what kind of Harley. I just, I just want a Harley. Yeah, that's it for me for when it comes to driving. When I start driving. Ooh. Eric, what's um, what's like your favorite Eric. muscle car of all time? It's kind of, I don't know. It, I, I it, it easily I would say seventy or sixty eight Dodge Charger, but then it's like, I saw the Roadrunner, and I'm like either between either of those two, but I guess mainly the Dodge Charger for me. Okay. RT model. Yeah. I I really like... I don't know. I think Dodge has a lot of cars that I really enjoy. Like... Uh, in Plymouth. Like, I think I would really like to have... A, a certain spec of, like, a, a Plymouth Barracuda. Um, yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, like, the Dodge Dart's pretty sick. And... There's a lot of other really fucking nice old muscle cars. I don't know. Like, uh, there's a lot of muscle cars that I'd love to just own. I, I don't really have, like, a particular, you know, one I would want. Like, any of them I think would be pretty sick. I just, I'm more picky with JDM than I am with muscle. Like, if I had any cool old American muscle car, I'd be like, fuck yeah. Because you know for a fact that that's going to, like, turn heads no matter what condition it's in as long as it's like you know actually running and shit like that you know driving anything old american muscle just looks fucking cool um, yeah yeah for sure so you know uh I, i'm just like fuck yeah i definitely would just love to have an old car um old american muscle is the best type of muscle yeah sure. fuck it Fuck go to a gym. Go to your old ass car dealership. Mark, go. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I can't have a muscle car, then I'm gonna just go with a with a '73 
Datsun. Just give me either the 240 or 280 model. I'm good. Yeah. I love that thing. Let's see. Um, what? That's just a fair lady, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Uh, which is just. You just stole that from Jaguar. Did they? Wait, how? Uh, yeah, the Jaguar. Jaguar. Hold on, let me get the F type. Every time I think of Jaguars, I think of the football team, Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> I don't watch a whole lot of football, but I know that my own fucking hometown team sucks ass. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Exactly, I know how you feel. I'm not in the in the football. Same. I'm not even in the... I'm, I'm not, like, watching the whole sports thing in general. Like, everyone around my city is just like, Oh, yo... Our, our team's playing basketball, yo. They're about to go ham on this guy, bro. Like, literally, every, like, literally, almost every single team where I am, it's like, hey, you're doing good getting to the big leagues, and then they just flop all the damn time. It's like, why even watch? Right. Cringe. Cringe. I'm just cringe, bro. I, I, I sent... I, I sent a picture of the Jaguar and the uh, Felizzi next to each other in general chat. Oh. Okay, but hold up. I'll let Eric say what it is. He'll know the car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's not wrong. He, he He's not wrong. I'm seeing it. Oh, my gosh. I love Japanese cars just stole from European or American cars. I saw yes. like a lot of old Nissans from like muscle cars. Like, yeah, there's, to be a, there's cars. a lot of old Toyotas that look like muscle cars. Like the original Celica looks like a muscle car. Oh yeah. I, I swear like the original Nissan Skyline was trying to be a muscle car until Ooh. they went to, until the off until they went to the R thirty four and they said, Hey, let's just make a fucking sports car. The freaking Ken Mary. Yep. Hey guys, uh okay. Let's, okay, how many of us watch Jenny Meska's channel? I think, I know you do, Devlin, right? Oh, it looks like the E-type? That's what you think it is? Yeah, the F-type. I, I just... No, uh, that looks like the E-type, but it, you might be right, yeah. I don't know, I, that, I guess... I, I mean... It looks like an old... It looks like an old Jag. Yeah, I mean, I like that. I like Jaguars, but yeah, I can see like the inspiration. A lot of Japanese cars were actually inspired by um, older cars yeah, from just, different countries. Yeah, I just said this. You deaf bitch. I'm not deaf, I'm just improvising. Like, the Land Cruiser, the reason the Toyota Land Cruiser looks like a Jeep is because Toyota himself had a Jeep. And he would off-road that fucking thing all the time. And he's like, I love it. And he went on to make the Land Cruiser inspired by the Jeep. Because he liked the Jeep so much. Oh. Yep. It's like... It's like Vulcan Vegan saying, I like accelerators, let's make it worse. (laughs) (laughs) Also, you know what? Okay, so... I was on YouTube, I was watching Channing Mystic's channel, and uh, there's one theory There's one theory he made that kind of has me scratching my head a little bit. Is it a How, recent like, video? No, okay, so it's like, he made a theory video, I think y'all, some of y'all might have seen it. Um, it's like how the Storm Realm, Hot Wheels City, and fucking Ice Realm are all somehow connected to each other. I'm just kind of sitting there watching. I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, huh? the old realms. I mean, the old yeah. realms. Yeah, Hot Wheels like City. The fucking... Yeah, they're all supposed to be like connected somehow, and it kind of has me scratching my head. Cause it's like, well, oh, how do you think Kadeem got to the drone headquarters? I don't know. Maybe they fucking caught his car midair or something. I th- th- okay, I don't think it's really that complicated. I honestly believe that Kadeem landed on the track 
below him. And the reason I think this is because, yes, in the scene, you see the track and it's off a little bit, but I think it's just an animation error. Because, I mean, in the scene when Vert hits the jump and he goes, come on, come on, it looks like he's not going to fucking make the jump because it's just an animation error. So I, I really believe that Kadeem lands on a track below him, and that's how he gets captured. I, I don't well, know. Yeah. I, I what, just... explains his, uh, what, is, what explains his onboard camera going out then? What do you think that might be? <sighs> just dramatic Probably effect. Probably crash. Probably. Yeah, but it kind of I mean, it... started to make sense a little bit, but it's just like, you know, at the same time, it's like, I, I don't know, man. What if, it's, what if the his onboard camera thing was because out of was because out of like his um camera view, one of those little uh drone like gig like bots just shot like an elect like an EMP from the back of his car and that's how his camera went out. Yeah. Uh, um, Y'all thinking way too hard about a fucking Hot Wheels cartoon. I think that's my fair. <laughs> <Blade>. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. you know. I think you know. I just think you know. Honestly, I like. It's kind of why I like to sometimes uh, dunk on. Ch I love Jenny Mesky. I love his channel. I really do. I have no nothing against him personally. I just think some of his theories are a little outlandish. Like we kind of talked. I think we talked about this before, but you know, uh, it's kind of why I, I don't know if you all have seen my videos that I've been linking to, linking on here from YouTube. But I like to dunk on him a little bit in my shit post videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the one I made where it's like, you know those fucking memes where it's just it's like fandom slander and you hear the fucking Powerpuff Girls theme song on in the background? Well, I made my own version of that. I made my own version of that. Like, accelerates just fandom slander. <laughs> and it's just like, I was just humming the fucking Powerpuff Girls theme song because I didn't know how to fucking... I didn't know how to fucking extract audio in the fucking app I was using, so I was just like, okay, fuck it, I'll just do, like, a voiceover recording in another app, and I just started fucking humming the Powerpuff Girls theme song. <laughs> in one part of it, I'm like, it's just the fucking guy on the, the whiteboard, you know, explaining stuff, and in the caption I put, Kenny Mesk explaining how fucking Dr. Tesla is fucking Major Wheeler's uncle in the law or something, uncle in law or something like that. <laughs> Because I think he would make a theory like that, honestly. Oh my, my god, god, guys. How do you think Major Wheeler made it to the fucking Tesla's cube? It's because they're both related. That's how... I'm like, uh, okay. I, I hate yeah. the theories that, like, oh, Galorum and Dr. Tesla were a couple, or Dr. Tesla and Lonnie are father and daughter. I'm like, shut up. Please that makes no sense. Shut the fuck up. Like I hate those theories so much. They're so Lauren, stupid. Dr. Tesla and Dr. Tesla's in the robots big time. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I Dr. fucking to be honest, I do not like Tesla and the accelerators just very much. I liked him in the whole race. I thought you know, his character, I think I don't know. He just comes off as too much of. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I feel like every time I see him on screen in the acceleration, I just want to fucking reach in the TV and strangle him. You I know, mean, he's, like, he's an asshole in World Race as well. Well, I mean, he's not that much of an asshole in World Race, but because like every time I see him in World Race, I'm like, hmm. Yeah, he's kind of a dick, but he doesn't make me want to reach for the screen and kill him. You know, but in Cell Racer, it's just like, dude, just. Fucking tell them. Just tell the drivers the truth, bro. You know. Honestly, I, I think Doctor Tesla was way more of an asshole in World Race because he gave Harrison Lau fucking Red Baron. <laughs> and, yeah, okay, yeah, that's a good point. Don't get me like started gave, on Red Baron. Don't get me started fucking, on that fucking car again. Y'all know how much I hate that car. Like <laughs> he gave everyone these super powered cars, and then he gave Lonnie a fucking Chevy Nomad. Yeah, that's weird. Like, why? It's modified. Okay, he says he, he yes, built cars, but yet he builds most of the cars are like fucking futuristic and kind of cool and shit. And then it's just like one of them's just like, like a fucking pickup truck. Uh -huh. or something like, that. like, why? Yeah, Did fucking... you really fucking build that dude? Because uh, that, that <laughs> 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 
Alec is a fucking child for doing well in the pickup truck. We respect the dealership pickup truck in this household. Okay, so this truck's <laughs> actually a really cool fucking truck, honestly. Honestly, that was... If I had that kind of truck in real life, I'd be really happy. That, that's a fucking cool truck, but... You know, I look like fucking... I look at Chevy Nomad or whatever, I'm just like... I don't think he built that. I think he just fucking stole that car from a dealership because he ran out of materials to make more fucking supercars. How do I build you know, a I, pickup truck? I got it. I'll go to a used dealership and pretend I built it myself. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. What if you just stole I'm those just, cars? I want to know. I just... Like, they must have known that not all of them were mollified, unless they just don't know what the fuck a Chevy is. <laughs> True. True. I mean... Okay. Like, some... Like, how come nobody complained about their car choices? Like, I would be pretty pissed off if fucking Ver Wheeler over there got a Dior or two, and I'm stuck with... a Red Baron. Like, yeah, I love the casting, yeah, but... Dude, it's just like, like you know... And, you know, outside universe explanation would be like, why the fuck did Mattel pick all these regular cars for certain drivers? Because honestly, when I was a kid, I didn't want to buy fucking Lonnie's car. You know, I wanted to buy fucking Dior too. I wanted to buy a Slingshot. I wanted to buy all the fucking cool cars that look fucking cool as shit. Their car is pretty, stuff. pretty good. I mean, it's cool, but it's just like you know, I wanted the cars that look like fucking jets or something. You know, I wanted a fucking, uh, I wanted Crazy 8s. I wanted those cars. I wanted Twin Mill, too. I wanted Ballista. I didn't want fucking, a fucking, the fucking Pontiac Rages. You know? Well, well, Rages like, cool, yeah. is cool, though. Rages is cool. That's more of a fancy. That's like a concept car. It's a concept comes. car, yeah. I wish it became a real car, because it is actually pretty cool. Yeah, that's neat. But, like, at the same time, it's just like, you know, why couldn't we just, you know... I don't know, chosen, like, actual original Hot Wheels cars, like, original designs for other drivers. I would have sold more toys. Nobody, nobody, because, nobody, because imagine, imagine if a little kid, you know, actually was, like, their parents had the car that was basically used in, like, World War II. Like, what if there was a fucking kid whose parents took him to school in a fucking Chevy Nomad? He's not gonna fucking wanna, he's not gonna fucking look at the line of car, but, like, oh, that's the thing about my parents drive. I'm gonna go buy a fucking little diecast version of that. I mean, no. I kind of, I kind of think that's false because when I was a kid, my grandma had a PT Cruiser, and there's a PT Cruiser in a game I played, and I used the PT Cruiser because the PT Cruiser my grandma had. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, I I'm, the... speaking from, maybe I'm speaking from how I would feel about it because honestly, I wouldn't want to fucking, wouldn't want fucking diecast in a fucking van. My fucking I would... mom drove. I would drive... Actually, I have more examples. My grandpa... I mean... Um, okay, so my grandpa had a Jeep, and I would use Jeeps in, in an off-road game I had. And then my dad had a a Dodge pickup truck, and I would drive the Dodge pickup truck in off-road games I had. So, like, there was that influence on me. So, like, when I would see a car in real life that I knew in a game, I would be like, oh, yeah, I want to drive that one. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's because... I don't know, maybe it is a result of pure mileage, maybe very kind of thing, results may very things. I'm just speaking how I feel about it. I mean, you it's know? fine, I'm I just think... saying. No, that's cool, though. I see your point, though. I get it. I can see both. I get I'm just, I get. I get the other side of the whole argument, but, like, you know, the only the only vehicle that, you know, my parents owned that I really liked, my dad had this really cool purple Ford F-150, and because purple's been my favorite color for a long time, that's why it was so cool. It's because it was fucking purple, and it had like a fucking racing stripe on the side of it. Was it a lightning? It, no, it was just like it was just like a regular race. It was just purple. It had just like a black racing stripe on the sides of it. You know, it was really cool. I think the reason. What, what blade? Mm -hmm. I think the reason they included real life cars was because it's their highway, it's like their fucking 35th anniversary. And since real life cars is like part of the brand, they're like, hey, let's include some real life cars. Yeah, I don't see the problem with real life cars in it. I think it was fine. Uh, At least they have cool livery. I just thought it was like, mm, a little weird. At least they have cool. 
at least at least I have cool liveries on like nowadays. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the yeah. thing, though, is like if they, if they would do better liveries for real life cars nowadays, the cars would stand out way more. Because like, there's some old ass Hot Wheels castings that I have that are real life castings and or real life cars, and like they have cool ass fucking vinyl schemes and shit, and I really like them a lot. Like, I didn't like certain real life cars as a kid. Because I was like, oh, whatever, it's a real life card. But if it had a cool livery on it, I was more like, oh, yeah, I really like the way this one looks. Um, and that's also due to the fact that, like, I grew up with Fast and Furious and Need for Speed. So, like, there was that early 2000s tuner and, you know, Swagger. racing scene shit, you know. So, um, yeah. But they kind of need to do that for like a lot of their castings, though, because a lot of the new liveries look like shit. Yeah, they really do. But you know, it's cool, guys. So I noticed. I just found out recently. I thought, okay, so they made the first two Hot Wheels like Soul Racers movies on VHS, and. So I, I tried to look for it. I could not find a VHS copy of the other two movies. But, you know, I was like, you know, I wanted to look to see if I could find them on VHS because I, you know, when we last talked, I, I just literally just ordered the World Race VHS tape that I currently own right now. But I thought it was so fucking cool that they had Accelerators movies on VHS tapes. And I'm, uh, when I started making some money, because I also I have some really good news, guys. I'm going to be working at Winn-Dixie real soon. And, what the uh, is that? Yeah, what's that? Winn-Dixie? It's Winn a grocery Dixie. store. Oh, it yeah. sounds like Windex to me. Yeah, Windex. You work with Windex? <laughs> wow. Like Consuelo I mean, from Finland. You get to drink this. Oh, no, I need Okay, so Windex is a grocery store for those of you who don't know. And uh, Yeah, you're on the east side. We're in the west. Well, I'm in the west. I'm in the fucking UK. I don't know. I don't know your American bullshit. Okay, just go watch because of Win Dixie. You don't know what Win Dixie is. So I'm with Aunt Sophia Rob. You know, and uh, well, I'm gonna be stocking produce. And uh, uh, actually, that was my first job. I hated it. My first job was fucking stock and customer services or representatives and fucking staples which is like an office supply store for those of you who don't know yeah we know we know staples i don't know staples about blade blade do you have staples what do you what do you guys have for office stores excuse me for office stores like what do you guys get office supplies um wh smiths close enough anyway okay. So yeah, that was my first job, and I only got it because my dad worked there very briefly on weekends, and uh, I know I did. I I had to leave the job because I was they weren't giving me enough hours. Yeah. Also, because I I sucked at stocking off supplies. I didn't know where anything went. Sometimes it would also be like computer supplies. It was also a really giant store, so I often got lost trying to stock shit up. And my boss wasn't very good at training. Nobody trained me how to train you all to do it. Because everyone was just like, nah, you'll figure it out. But my next job that I got, you know, I worked at a Mexican restaurant called Salsas. And uh, I worked there for nine months. And honestly, so far in my life, even though it was only my second job, it was the best job I've had so far. Because I met some really cool people there. And uh, I cleaned, I was a busboy. And uh, I also was a dishwasher. And uh, I loved both positions very much. That's what she said. <laughs> oh come on, that was good. That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, but this job when I started stop when I started when Dixie, um, my manager that I was talking that I'm working for is going to be paying me eleven bucks an hour, which is a pretty good rate. Because when I started, what's the minimum uh, rage in Florida? Rage. Yeah, minimum rage. That's a good one too, because you know everybody's fucking angry in Florida. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Florida. Oh, my uh, homies I, hate Florida. I, I, I could speak. I could definitely say that's true. 
What is it though? What is the minimum wage? I think it went up to like nine or ten bucks an hour last year, a couple years ago. I don't know. That's it. I don't, keep, I don't know. I, don't, I I'm not too sure. I'm, hey, I'm on. Let me go look it up. But by the way, y'all are probably gonna think I'm weird for this, but instead of using Google, I use Bing to search shit up. Ew. Yeah, Gross! You're a traitor! Yeah. How dare you! Yeah, here's the reason why. Here's the reason why. Hear me out. Microsoft rewards points. And I staff. Do do I have That's okay, just sad more than anything. Uh, yeah. That's listen, reward you for using if Bing. If I get enough rewards points from searching shit up. I can buy like a fucking five dollar Xbox Store gift card and buy a good game. So on you're telling me and, you're telling me if I search know, up dirty inappropriate things, I'll get Microsoft points. On Bing. <laughs> that's that's, that's yeah. fucking that sad. sad. That is sad. All for five. Yeah, I'll, I'll just look up like a bunch of. Yeah, hey, look, Microsoft has been fucking the Xbox Store has been having some pretty good shit for under five bucks lately. I just bought. I bought Arms and like, Hell's Highway, you know. But okay, so yeah. Anyway, so we'll look at the minimum wage, in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um. I'm rewarding you for googling shit. Fuck hour. Okay, uh, ten an hour. Ten? Oh boy. So wait. That's wrong. That's double digits. And you switch to Google, you know what I mean? Like, not like completely change it, but just quick tap, would you still get points for that? No, I like how we all worse. ragged on him as soon as he said, Guys, I know this is gonna sound weird, but I use Bing. We're just like, Oh, you fucking sicko. <laughs> Who the fuck like on what? My friend prefers Yahoo. Well, I always strive to be the weird person of every friend group. So we're you just know, we're just messing with you, Jordan. The only I time I had to. I'm, I'm judging you based what? on what? What'd so you say, Blade? Buy more games for that. The only time I'm I had to use. So buy more games. The only time I had to use okay. Bing in my life was was because in school they fucking always specified to use Bing and not Google Chrome. Like, remember to use Bing. Yeah, Bing is fucking dog shit. And they always yeah, like. Not, oh, okay. I'm not. I'm not saying it's great. I'm just saying, you know, I just like to. I just want to be able to get gift cards so that I don't have to fucking spend real money to fucking buy games. You know, that's how I got. That's how I got. I've been. I've been. I've been grinding this shit out for years. Well, all so you can do is how just many... type a letter and spam it. How many times have you gotten this five dollar gift card? If you've no, been doing geez, this, shit. okay. So I, I kind of discovered. Okay, I just I think I discovered Microsoft Rewards, the whole rewards program thing, in like twenty nineteen. <laughs> so you know, it used to be where like okay, so it's not like where you can do as many times as you want. There's a certain limit searches where you stop earning points per day. Like if you do, uh, if you, you can only earn up to like. You can only earn up to like 300 points per day with just searches, you know, searches on your mobile device or just on on your your computer. Which, but there's a really cool fucking cheat how to do that if you don't actually have a computer or a laptop. Just fucking switch to like the desktop version on your fucking browser and there you go. You're good to go. Damn, he's got you know, all the cheat codes. Also... <laughs> That's having cheat codes for fucking bang. Could it's you imagine cheap, being just, just being like, like "Sir, you've looked at too much, you've looked at too much porn today. You're not getting any more fucking Bing points. Sorry, you lost your Bing privileges. <laughs> Instead of social credits, it's Bing, Bing points. Okay, there's also other ways to get rewards points for Microsoft. There's these things called daily sets where, you know, you basically there's three of them you have to do per day." You know that you can do per day. Um, one of them's a quiz. You oh know, and usually varies. One of them, one of them's a poll. Oh and you, no! One of them's like a daily poll. Like, what do you prefer? Do you prefer 
pineapple on pizza or not. Something that just like that. sounds be... that just sounds painfully evil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it gets to more and more points, so I can buy more fucking games on my Xbox. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't want them asking me questions for money. That's just like. Sir, do you prefer sandwich with ham or salami? And it's like, you're asking me oh, too many personal questions, and I don't feel comfortable. What's so powerful about fucking salami? Yeah, what? I like hard salami over ham. That's, uh, that's, that's what, what I she like. said. Hey, uh, I like salami. She lied. Like, honestly, a good snack is just a packet of salami. Yeah. Yeah, my mom will buy, like, hard salami from the store for my sandwiches, and I'll just fucking take the fucking pack of salami and live in my room and eat it. Eric, you, know, you haven't I'm really been talking much during and... this podcast. Take over the fucking spotlight, my boy. What, um... No. Okay. Say slap, I see. Penis. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Eric. Eric, what kind of grocery stores and office stores do you have in Canada? Okay, so, okay, so obviously we got Staples. Obviously we have Staples, which Based. thank God because based. Uh, well, office-based ones. Office-based ones. Uh, n- nothing really. We just have Staples. If we're talking like camera stores, then we got Henry's. Um. Do you guys have Radio Shack? I believe we have Radio Shack, but that's like way up north, like past the that city. Sound, that sounds familiar. What the fuck is Radio Shack? Radio Shack is a very old, old, early 2000s, late 90s fucking store where you buy electronics. I it, was, think they, I think, it was like a competitor of Best like, Buy. Yeah. Basically, in layman's terms, it was a really cool store, like Blockbuster and Toys R Us. You know, so it died. I think yep. that, I think a store like that that we have here that's like within that exact same description is Deja Vu Discs. Deja and that's Deja like, Vu Discs. That sounds pretty yeah, badass. I'm not even joking. That's the title of a store. <laughs> that's, that's like funny. Deja Vu. I've been in space. Of course, someone had to do an initial D reference. Dude, oh dude, I actually went in there one time. They had a whole collection of initial D. I was like, you know. <laughs> hey, no. Uh, 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 I don't know. You know what would be funny? You know what I would love to do one day just to fuck with a, just to, you know, prank, you know, just, just basically just have fun to be an asshole. If I'm at the mall, you know, mm. and I'm just kind of like loitering outside the fucking Spencer's, um, Hey, one of those who don't know Spencer's just basically like hot topic. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's got a dolphin in the back. If I'm loitering there and I see a fucking little kid pass by, I'm just gonna tell him like, "Hey kid, go in the back of that store. You'll see some really cool stuff." And then just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come out all traumatized. Dude, <laughs> oh, there's a sale going on. Dude, I remember the first time I went into the back of uh, I went into the back of the Spencers. But here's the worst part: I went into the back of the Spencers with two of my friends who were girls. One of them loved to smoke weed and had a whole voice. The other one was just like, "What the hell are we doing here?" The first thing, what like like my friend, the friend, the one that smokes, says, "Oh hey, come to the back. You really you'll, you'll really like this stuff." So I go to the back, and they have the back like kind of like kind of sectioned off with like a curtain and all that and it says and it says enter 18 plus whatnot i was like uh okay i don't know what the hell this is and she said no no no, enter after me and i'm like this can't be good so i enter she's there smiling she's there smiling erratically holding up a red dildo and i'm like what the hell are you doing (laughs) you're gonna say something like that just like oh it's gonna end with dildo it's gonna end with a dildo. It always ends with a dildo. Yeah, it, the, uh, it did not. It no, it actually didn't end with a dildo. That entire time ended with about three different sets of Cards Against Humanity just bought and a whole ass oh, You know what sucks? They don't have cur- they don't have those curtains at my Spencer's. I don't think they have those anymore. Those curtains anymore. No. But. Oh, 
Well, okay, so I, for, wait, to, hold on. Eric is in Canada, so maybe they do censorship differently there. My well, God, Canada, my, my, my geolocation leaked by, leaked by Germany. Facts. You're good, you're good. All facts. Yes, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, they just fucking put a sex shop in the back of a fucking store that sells, like, stoner memorabilia. Like, why not? I don't know. I was like, it's a big crave suspense. It's like, hey, let's combine two things at once. Let's just take a fucking adult store and combine it with the fucking hot top and just see what happens. You know? Yes. That, I, the mindset of the people behind Spencer's because honestly, it's just like, it kind of, it's like, okay, it kind of works. Because they got like all the fucking stoner shit. And what is stoners like? They like having sex. So, makes sense. Put the fucking dildos and all the toys in the back. And more out of it, let's put some funny adult cards that are going to give to their dads on, fuck, on their birthdays. You know, or to their fucking grandmas and the fucking card for their grandmas, especially with just some picture, cartoon picture of a lady with her tits sagging down to the floor. You know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's basically how it is. <laughs> Yeah, I always wanted to do that with my grandmother, but I talked to my dad about it. But she, my dad would be like, she will fucking murder you if you do that. I'm like, oh, come on, where's the fun in that? You know? <laughs> hey, hey, just like, come on, dad. He's like, no. Fuck. Can I do it to mom when she gets old? He's like, yes. But like, yes! <laughs> Good my Christ. Christ. Yeah. I like Spencer's. I like I like my mall, my my nearby mall. It's called the Orange Park Mall. It's, it's a pretty cool place. Okay, now oh. big big question. Uh, when was the first yes. time you were taken into Victoria's Secret? Oh good god, question. that was I like have... I have two months ago. ago. What? Two month? Yes, two months ago. I've seen the inside of it. I've seen in Victoria's Secret from the outside, but I've never been inside and that was with the friend that smokes because like we went to the mall and then and then and then she was like oh i'm gonna go into victoria's secret and i was like oh okay i'll just wait out here and he's like no you're not nerd you're gonna come in here with me and i'm like why though and Get she's like and you can look at, and, the, and, the, and, the, and then she's like so you can help me look at a good look at a good bra strap for my cup size and i'm like oh you're, you're asking too many personal questions god <laughs> Eric, he wants to what? fuck you, man. <laughs> my, yeah. my boy. <laughs> you got that riz in you without knowing. You got that riz potential. Listen, okay, listen. Unnoble riz. <laughs> listen, something like that probably would have happened like a year before that moment. But I'm telling you, she did not smell good. She, she, no, she what? did not smell good. Hey, I was I'm not in the girls that smoke. Good. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. no. That's I want a hard girl pass. To smoke That's... I want like, girl like I have no problem if someone smokes. I have absolutely no problem with that. But it, it sounds like I have a problem with it. No, <laughs> I actually don't. The one thing I have a problem with is if it, it, it is if you smell like the back of a trash can. Bruh. The back of a trash can? I don't know how that works. Probably where dog. she meets the people that she gets the drugs from. See, I like, mean, I'm not, I'm not into, like, wi I'm not gonna date anybody that smokes. I'm just not attracted to it. Uh, I don't smoke myself, so it's like, nope, you know, never except, except accidentally. Okay, here's a here's a little funny story which I've already told German. I accidentally did an edible without even knowing. Oh God. And it was during the, one of the most simplest scenarios ever. Going to get pizza. Oh my god. I forgot about Tell this story. Beat. Yes. Okay. So, I so at this time, I was in college. I had, uh, like, arts college because I was trying to do, like, trying to learn the basics, then go into animation, blah, 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 blah. Still working on that. But anyway, so the time of that year, like... I made friends with everyone basically in the class and like we've had a few times uh planning out where it's like hey yo like ask hey yo like on friday let's help let's all head over to willie's place we finna bring the whole joint i was like okay cool so then 
Friday comes, and we all heading over to Willie's place, and like that was the and, and like that was the spot to hang. So we head over there. Everyone's settled in. Everyone's chilling. You know, everyone's got the booze, got everything set up, except for the food. So then everyone's drinking, bored, kind of whatnot. After like a whole conversation gets mid tone, and I'm like, "Hey, yo." You know what? Let's liven up the shit. Pizza's on me. What y'all? There's one. And they're like, oh, yeah, we want this, 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 this. I'm like, all right, bet. Let's do it. Every single time I've had my friends from that college over, they've always brought over food. And just as a show of respect, they've always washed the dishes, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's just our own little thing. So my friend, Eliza, brings over brownies. I thought it was uh -oh. actual, like, natural cooking brownies. I didn't know she put weed in the brownies. So before I left to get the pizza, I, I took a whole brownie. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, so, so the pizza place... No, no, this is where it's funny. So the pizza place is, like, right across the street. So, like, I, so like I probably just walk across the street, turn the block, and then I'm there. So I'm just sitting. The windows are designed to where, like... If you just wanted to sit and wait for the pizza, you could just sit on the windowsill and just chill. So I ordered the stuff, sat on the windowsill, and I was chilling. Then then I started smiling for no reason. I was like, okay, yeah, probably excited. Then, I, th then I'm smiling for a little bit longer than I wanted to, and I'm like, okay, what the hell is this? I try to stop smiling. I can't stop smiling. My smiling, my smiling gets bigger. So in vision... So envision someone with the Joker smile. That was literally me. Then a bunch of kids walk wow. in, and one, and like a group of kids are just there, like, and, and a group of kids are just there. They they notice that I have the Deadpool sweater, so they're all just like, "Oh, yo, hey, I like your Deadpool sweater." And I have my head down. I'm like, yeah, "Thank you. Yeah, I know it's cool." And they're like, "Dude, dude, is like everything okay?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, everything's okay." The entire time while I was waiting for the pizza, I was trying not. To to look up at this kid, so then he just thinks like, "Oh yeah, everything's good." You wanna know how my face got fucking deformed like this? I can't stop smiling and, and, and some Joker shit. That lasted for an entire thirty minutes. I've never felt more uncomfortable getting pizza in my life, but it wore off. It, it wore off afterwards, and then we got the pizza. So then after the pizza. This is where this is where it at least starts to get a little bit juicy. So after the pizza, right? Everyone just has pizza, booze, all that stuff. Everyone's turned. Everyone's just like, "Hey yo, the a a a yo, I'm finna take a nap." So everyone's just passed the hell out. Me and my homeboy, me and my homeboy Willie, we're the only two people that's like actually chilling, and everyone else is asleep. My buddy Joseph, he gets up, you know, after he's completely wasted, he gets up. He asks, oh, hey, where's the bathroom? He then, like, we then point to him where the bathroom is. So he doesn't go to the bathroom. He goes to the, he, he goes to the kitchen, and, and I'm watching him, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, he's, he's probably going to get himself, like, a drink or something, whatever. No. This man mistakes the kitchen for the bathroom. So he opens the fridge, starts to unzip his pants, about to put the fridge and me and Willie are like no yo 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 no 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 and then and then and then Willie like directs him over to the bathroom. I swear to God, if Willie was just five seconds late, Joseph would have pissed in the fridge on the souffle he had saved for for a parents' dinner the next day. Oh, that sounds like the plot. Yeah, it sounds like a plot to one of those college stoner movies from, like, the 2000s. Oh, my you know, God, like, yes. <laughs> you, know what, you, you, you know what's kind of funny about that, though? Willie, like, Willie, like for, for, for as cool as he was, the dude was, a, the dude was such a big hippie. He was the biggest, he was the biggest hippie. Like, everything around his house was, like, peace and love, man. And he even had, like, how many, how many of the peace signs like engraved in photo albums and like a whole bunch of political shit <laughs> even wore a bandana at the party <laughs> and a whole wig and a whole wig looking like one of the hippie protesters from like the 60s and shit when they were doing protests and all that he literally dressed up like that for the party you always want to hear a funny starter story i had 
And it yes. Went through, Go ahead. So this is my first time doing an edible because I never done an edible before. My ex, um, their roommate, they uh, they had a roommate named uh, Candy, and she was like this complete uh, spiritual individual. Like you go into her little cottage in their backyard, in the backyard, mm-hmm. and like walk into the cottage, it was just like fucking lava lamps and fucking those weird flower tapestries that you see in some kind of fucking e-girl's room. You know, the kind of fuck, it's like, oh yeah, I listen to Nirvana and I smoke, I smoke my plugs fucking, like, I fucking, I don't just fucking buy from my plug, I fuck him. I like have sex with my plug. Oh, like, what? That, that, it was like that vibe right there. You know, I was like, wow, this, uh, this room smells like disappointment, weed, and uh, but fatherlessness. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it um, like sin is what it smelled like. If sin had a smell, this would have been it. But she was uh, she was really not no no she was really sweet. She was a really nice woman. She was a real nice girl. So she uh, she made me an edible. It was like okay, so it's like um, those rice crispy marshmallow trays. So instead of rice krispies, it was cinnamon toast crunch. And, uh, I made the dumbest mistake ever. You want to know what that mistake was? What? Yeah. You ate the I whole ate thing. The whole, I ate the whole fucking thing. Oh. So they, they, Candy looked at me. She's like, did you just eat that whole thing? I'm like, yeah, why? She just started to smile. I was like, oh. You're, you're going to have, you're, you're either going to have a really good time tonight or you're going to have the worst fucking time of your life. I'm like, well, I'm young, so what's life if, you're, if you don't try something new every day? You know? It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, have fun. In about thirty minutes, you're gonna you're gonna feel something. I'm like, mm, that. In about thirty minutes, I'm sitting in my ex's jacuzzi, in their jacuzzi and hot tub, and I'm just like. Chilling. Uh, their friend Giovanni, he came over. You know, he's a fucking stoner too. And for some reason, he always carries a Bible around with him, which I have no problem with, but he would like. Okay, so my ex and Giovanni, they would, um. They would snort fucking pain medication. They would crush it up and snort it. They would snort you know, what? They what? snort pain medication. Oh, pain like medication. Yeah. I thought you said penny medication. Penny. <laughs> hmm. Oh man, have fucking. That's about moment when pennies have fucking headaches. Like, oh, here's your prescription. And if Abraham Lincoln's just looking at me. I'm like, thanks, man. My head really hurts. <laughs> yeah, I probably she just got shot in the back in the head like 300 years ago. That's probably why. So, anyways, it, he would like, he would snort fucking pain medication off his Bible. I'm like, uh, does that, like, go against your religion or something? I don't know. It seems really blasphemous. I'm not Christian, but that seems really blasphemous, dude. He's like, eh. No. Eh. Who cares? For some reason, he thought Stairway to Heaven was the most demonic song ever. I was like, wait till he hears Norwegian black What a fucking dork. Oh, my God. (laughs) He's like, well, if you heard it backwards, he's worshipping Satan. I'm like, dude, go listen to fucking Mayhem or fucking Dark Throne or something. Okay, okay, some- first off, any music that's played backwards is gonna sound fucking evil because it's backwards. Like, I, yeah. I hate this whole idea that backwards sound, backwards music is somehow, oh, the music's played in reverse, so we're worshipping Satan. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I'm pretty sure demons don't even speak English backwards, that sounds fucking retarded. Of course, it's gonna sound like gibberish. I mean, you put any language backwards, it's gonna sound fucking gibberish. Like, shut the fuck up, you stupid bitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's just you know, fucking I, uncool, I, I, I bro. Dude, listen to Bathory if you wanna hear some really satanic music. Fucking you know, give me Bajor. Fucking. Yeah. Um. You know. Bathory. Demu Borgir, that's usually how I pronounce, but yeah. Fucking, you know, it just it's basically just like listen to Norwegian black metal music, man. But anyways, I'm sitting in the I'm sitting in the fucking jacuzzi in your hot tub or what the fuck you want to call it, and I'm just like I'm just kind of chilling there. Now, 
I guess technically the first time I got really stoned was at the dentist's office. I mean, let's be honest, that's how we all, most of us got stoned for the first time because they put that fucking gas over you in your body, you know, and it's basically getting you high. That's never happened to so, me. So, yeah. So, basically, um, I, I was like, I started to get deja vu. I started to feel a certain way. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm thinking of that, uh, you know, slime and comfortably numb by Pink Floyd, where he's talking about how he felt that he felt the feeling that he hadn't felt since he was like a fucking kid. I was just like, oh yeah, my hands definitely feel like two balloons right now. So I couldn't tell if I was awake or asleep at that moment. And I, I began to feel like the guy in the Metallica music video for one, where he's like got his fucking arms and legs blown off. Darkness and feel anything. imprisoning me. All I see. Oh, I'm so horrible. I cannot live. I cannot die. Trapped in myself. Trapped in myself. Funny about holding tails like that. I was like, oh, what the fuck's going on, man? My like, mind has me. taken my sight, taken my speech, Take taken my, my hair, and taken my arms, taken my legs, taken my soul. <laughs> yeah. It was like that. Giovanni, I'm sitting across from him. He's like, George, you good, dude? I'm like, uh, I just ate a whole ass edible. And one, one sings like, you what? And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm freaking the fuck out. And I'm like freaking, I start crawling up and I start curling up in fetal position. Oh, it's gone, oh, man. I just start, fr I'm, I'm freaking out. He's like, dude, 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 Jordan, listen to me. What? You need to relax, brother. Why? Well, let me tell you, he's like, well, let me tell you something. What you're experiencing right now is something us stoners only go through at least once in our lives. What you're experiencing, I want you to cherish it. I want you to relax. Let Mary Jane take care of it. Uh, She's going to take good care of you, buddy. Mary Jane. And then that's when I started to, like, kind of calm down a little bit. And my third eye really started to open up. And all of a sudden, I feel like I'm traveling across the world, man. I'm like, I'm going through the fucking portal at 300 miles per hour, <laughs> literally. Prying like, open my third eye. Prying <laughs> open my third eye. That's a tool reference. Yeah. Like, I don't even listen to tool, but yeah, I kind of get it. You know, you know what's funny? I made a joke one time when I had Facebook. I, I made I made a joke, a reference to the tool song, fucking schism, or whatever, that ba -na 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 -ba -na 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 Yeah, that, that, that's schism. Yeah, that song. And I just said, listen to the tool during sex, be like, I know the penis spits. <laughs> I just really made that. I, just, I turned it into a fucking. I turned that fucking line into the song where he says, "I know the piece is fit into a fucking sex pun. I know the penis fits. <laughs> Everyone was just like, "What the fuck?" And it started kind of getting a little attraction. It got all these fucking views and shares on Facebook. And I, I was like, "Wow." I know the penis fits, but I know the penis fits. <laughs> You know what's funny? I remember one post I made on Facebook got like my I used on Facebook got like thousands of shares. I made a joke. I posted two pictures. One was of Gerard Way from My Chemical Romance back in the day, and one was of Ben Shapiro. I'm like, if you look at these two pictures closely, Gerard Way is just an emo version of Ben Shapiro. Just look at the two photos closely, and you'll see it. And I uh, was like, I want to see. Just look up a picture of Gerard Way from My Chemical Romance and look up a picture of Ben Shapiro and you'll start to see the similarities. It's fucking funny. I posted on Facebook. I was getting either getting laugh reactions, angry reactions from a bunch of fucking emo kids. Like, don't fucking insult Gerard Way like that ever. I'll find you and I'll cut your nuts off. Who the fuck oh, is... Was, yeah. Who the fuck are you... Who's... Who's... What? Ben Shapiro looks like a non-emo version of Gerard Wade from My Who, Chemical Romance. Who's Gerard Wade? The lead singer of My Chemical Romance. Oh. Yeah. Just look up a picture of Gerard Wade from back in the day, then look up a picture of Ben Shapiro, and you'll start to see the similarities. Gerard Wayne. Oh, Ben Shapiro. Why am I thinking of Dave Chappelle? <laughs> I'm fucking idiot. Yeah, that was weird. Anyways, so, 
back to the stoner story. Um, my ex was basically going to get beers, and he came back, and uh, Giovanni was like, "JP, uh, your boyfriend's freaking out." And I was like, "Where are some high words? Where are they?" Yeah. It's my joy friends. Because they, they identified as non binary, so yeah. The uh they were like they were like, I'm here, Jordan, don't worry. And they got they got into the they got into the hot tub, they got into the jacuzzi or whatever it's called a hot tub. So I don't know yeah. the difference between a jacuzzi and a hot tub. Are they basically the same thing? Yes. Pretty much. Yeah, okay. The hot tub. Sometimes I'll call it hot tub, sometimes I'll call it jacuzzi. I'll just say, yeah, I'll call it either. Hot square. Hot they'll get, they'll get, they got into the hot tub, and I'm like, here, here, babe, I got you. And I called up to them, I just leave my head on their chest, and they just, I'm just like, hold me. It's like that fucking scene in The Mask, where, where the goons are kind of going up to Jim Carrey, and they're about to kill him. And, uh, well... That's when the that's when Jim Carrey just like starts pretending he's like an actor giving a dramatic performance. It's like, hold me closer, Ed. It's getting dark. Like that fucking scene in the mask. Hold me closer, Ed. It's getting dark. <laughs> Tell Tiny Tim I won't be making it home for Christmas tonight. <laughs> Tell Sir Scott I don't give a damn. I fucking love that movie so much. <laughs> Like, if you've seen The Mask, yeah, it's a fucking funny movie. I love it. I love Jim Carrey. But, yeah. So, there I am just tripping balls, basically. My ex, they're, um, he's, uh, they're uh, fucking just holding on to me. We're listening to the music. And about one time I, ready, I was about ready to get out of the fucking hot tub, my ex, JP... His friend Giovanni and his roommate Candy all had to fucking help me get out of the fucking hot tub. All three of them had to help me get out. I was that fucked up. Were you flying I was through that space? Fucked up. What's that? Were you flying through space? Basically, yeah. I was like, wow. You know, I like they had a. Okay, so JP had my left arm. Giovanni had my right arm, and Candy had both my legs. You know, they helped me step out of the hot tub, and they kind of just, like, kind of carried me back into JP's room, dragged me off, you know. They helped me get dressed in my clothes, you know, which was a little awkward for me, because as soon as I said on my swim trunks, I was basically naked, you know, but I didn't really care. I just wanted, they didn't, they didn't seem to mind either. They were just really helping me out, so they didn't really care, which was really nice of them, you know. Cause honestly, I would do the same thing. It's like you know, I don't, I don't care if I've seen your dick or whatever. I just want to, I just want to help you out. You know. Is that a so, yeah. <laughs> That's <funny> for me. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, nice dick, bro. Here, let me get your pants on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and then I just like, and, and I kind of just passed out. I woke up. It was like one in the morning. Go like, oh, on. I uh. I woke JP up. I was like, uh, "Hey, babe, I gotta, I gotta get home. Can you give me a ride home." I was still kind of high, but my dad, my dad texted me. That's how I woke up. He's like, "Hey, where are you?" I was like, "Oh, okay, I'm on my way home. Sorry, Dad." And then, uh, and then he took me home. I was like, uh, "Well, this was, this was a very awkward night, JP. I'm sorry if I acted inappropriate." They were like, "Oh no, it's okay." You know, you're just really high, right? You're just really stoned right now. I'm starting to come down a little bit, but I'm still feeling it. So, yeah, when I when I walked back into my dad's house, because I was I was with my dad's house, when I walked back into his into the house, he saw me. He's like, "You're stoned, aren't you?" I'm like, "Yeah." So, ah, eh. how was it? Are you doing okay? I'm like, you yeah. know, I uh. Ate a whole ass edible. He started laughing. He started cracking up. It's like you fucking idiot. <laughs> I'm like, you know, he's like, it's okay. I made that mistake once too. That was about your age. I was like, really? He's like, no, I never did edibles. I never did drugs. But I knew people who did. <laughs> I was like, huh? So thanks, Dad. I guess is your dad like not a stoner? 
He doesn't do drugs. He's too busy to do it. He works all the fucking time. He's way too busy to do that shit. You know, so, like, I think he would kind of smoke weed. I don't know. I don't think he would. You know, he's he's kind of straight. He used to smoke cigarettes, but, you know, he got just vapes now, which is weird. I, I, I kind of get weirded out when I see, like, middle-aged people vape. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, I either think to myself, either they're trying to do that to quit or they're having a midlife crisis. You know? Maybe both. <laughs> Maybe both. But, yeah. So, like, yeah, my dad, he doesn't really care if I fucking smoke weed or anything like that. He doesn't care if I get high. He's, he's more laid back. My mom, on the other hand, on the other hand is, uh, well, we'll just say she, She's very, very old school. You know, like, she's just, you know, weird. But, yeah. So, that was the first time I got really fucked up off of, like, weed or an edible. Yeah. Let it be served as a caution you know, to never eat a whole ass edible once you plan on getting really fucked up. I think I'm going to do it, but I'm going to be playing Need for Speed. Oh no! I want to play Fallout New Vegas. I, that's my favorite video game of all time. And I've never played it while stoned, so I want to play it while I'm stoned one day, I, one of these days. I played Bioshock on shrooms once, and that was scary. Oh Jesus! <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine being like an under under fucking water underwater city city while fucking tripping balls, you know, like a psychedelic drug. That was. That was it was you pretty, know. pretty, pretty sketch. Do you think somebody's played LSD Dream Simulator while actually on LSD? You think somebody actually tried that once? You know, you know that PS One game that was released in Japan, LSD Dream Simulator. Yeah, you know, it's like a, I thought yeah. that was. I wonder if I thought that wasn't real. I thought that was like a game that somebody made that's not really a PS1 game. I mean, maybe it is a legit game, but I thought it wasn't like like a legit PS1 game. It was like a, a weird game somebody made, but I could be wrong. Anyway, but yeah, I have heard of that game. Yeah, what if somebody actually took LSD or shrimps and actually played it? Oh. You know, that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I remember, you know, so I have another kind of a short, funny stoner story. So I, I'm friends with one of my ex-girlfriends, Lily. She's a, she's a really good friend of mine now. You know, she's a stoner, too. Um, one time I was, I, I got really fucking high and I called her up. On video call, I was kind of just talking to her, and all of a sudden, I blurted out, "I forgot how fucking hot you were." Oh no! And she's like, "She's like, what the fuck oh. did you say?" <laughs> I'm like, "Uh, I fucked up, dude." She's like, "Jordan, you need to relax." She didn't get she didn't get angry at me or like cuss me out or anything like that because she's usually pretty chilled out. But like, even I I'd never seen her that upset before. It's usually she's really chill, but it's like if I knew I, I kind of knew I fucked up. And she was actually she actually looked pretty like shocked that I said that. And she's like, "Wow, oh, I, I am so." I and like the next day as soon as I was like completely sobered up, I called her up. I was like, "Look, Lily, honey, sweetheart, I am so fucking sorry I said that to you last night." She's like, "Yeah, it's okay. I, I don't really care. Just that was just that just weirded me out." You know, I was just a little surprised she said that. I said, well, you know, I'm a little more honest when I'm stoned, you know. <laughs> like, I even I even, uh, I even, texted my ex when I was crossfaded one time, you know. I was like, my, my, my ex, one of the only exes that I still, that, you know, I could still get in contact with, but I choose not to because, well, she's my ex, she's a bitch. But, you know, I was just like, you know, I contacted her. I was like, what's up, cunt? And she's like, what the oh. fuck? She texted me, Jordan. I said, I don't know. It felt like it. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. 
God damn. Um, yeah, I was pretty fucked up, but yeah, those are my weird inebriation stories. But uh, yeah, uh, do you have any funny stories for us, Telly? Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. this wasn't this didn't happen to me. This happened to a guy I met at college. Uh, his name was Garrett. He, he, if you ever, if you ever, seen the guy, you could very tell he's very Republican, a little bit redneck. He, so he likes to drink beer a lot. And uh, there was this one day where this is kind of like when we all first met, like a little group of mine at college after a fire alarm drill, actually. But um, it was pretty late. We were staying up, just talking or whatever. He he tells a story where he. I think it was probably around his high school time, but uh, he was there with some other buddies and all. He got really drunk, of course, and there's this other friend with him. He got super drunk, like to the point where he could black out any second. But this is a very kind of similar thing to what Eric had said earlier. The friend asked, can I use the bathroom? He's like, all right, sure. The guest of the house, or the host, was like, yeah, sure, because his parents were gone, or whatever. So this guy, he just tells him, like, uh, go down the hall, and then, like, two rooms to the right, or whatever. He's like, all right. Barely makes it over there. He goes to the room on the left. That's where the laundry room is. And what he does, he gets on top of the fucking dryer, or washer, whatever one it was, and took a fucking shit in it. <laughs> oh my god. It was a full on shit. <laughs> and then, and then Garrett walked in there, he's like, wait, wait, uh, wait, this ain't the bathroom. Oh, fuck, what's that smell? <laughs> you just put full GG Allen there. He pretty much did. They're like, oh, fuck. And the host is like, oh, fuck, what am I going to tell my parents? Because it, it was probably like a Sunday night, and then they came back Monday. I think it was something like that. So they came back. They are like, oh, God, what happened? He, the host was honest with them. He told them the truth. It's like, all right, I, had, I did have a party and all. Then the guy who took a shit, he came over there. He wanted to apologize. And then he gave them... 200 bucks to fix the washer. Nice. But why would you give them 200 bucks? They would just... They would... You'd rather, you know, get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> but you took a fucking shit in there. <laughs> my god. Mm -hmm. So insanitary. Mm -hmm. Oh my... Fuck, dude. <laughs> Everyone's just losing their fucking bowel movements in these stories. I, um... I was hanging out at my friend Michael's, and, um... My friend Zach was with us, and... Uh, I don't remember if we had a party, if we were just hanging out, whatever it was, but... Zach ended up finishing up a bottle of Captain Morgan. And it's like 3 in the morning, and I wake up a little bit to the sound of him vomiting into the fucking kitchen sink. <laughs> it was so funny, because like the next morning, I'm like, dude, did you get sick? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I woke up to like the sound of you puking. It was pretty funny. Because he's like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> he, he would he would have told the story if he was here, but he didn't want to join the podcast. Though, so. but um, there was a time where him and I had kind of we we sort of I don't know like we sort of had like a falling out in our friendship at well, this one point in time and like. We were just, like, really stupid young kids, so, you know, like, you know how young kids kind of get into fights? Well, uh, um, we, like, 
uh, stopped kind of sort of talking and like I think I think he had it or I did I don't remember but like I remember there was like this golden like pop tart and like we were waiting at the bus stop and I think I walked up to him and I was like hey man and he's like hey and like either, either way one of us was just like you want this pop tart and sure. you're just like yeah and yeah a pop tart basically saved our friendship mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's but we 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 fucking reference it all the time because it's it's so stupid. <laughs> that is surprisingly wholesome. I like that. I love that. Um, yeah. I don't remember what the pop tart flavor was, but yeah. Um, a golden pop tart is what you said. It was in a yeah, golden yeah. golden wrapper. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that. Um, okay, so you know that reminds me of where you said he was puking in the sink. Oh, I'm so sorry. It reminds me of where they all drink the uh, the cat bottle, and they all <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so that reminds me of that episode of Family Guy where they all start puking in the living room. Oh, <laughs> yep, I know you're talking it's about like, now. It's like, oh my god, I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry. <laughs> it's like, I'm so sorry. I'm never. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Who wants me? Well, and they all start puking <laughs> out <laughs> one scene. <laughs> 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 um, oh. uh, speaking of puke stories as well I was very young at the time and I may maybe it was like 5 or 4 and we used to go camping a lot and this was before my parents divorced but yeah. um, I, uh -huh. I had like eaten a shitload of like fucking hostess like donuts and uh, like bi those big laffy taffies, and I just like kind of just puked all in the tent that I was sleeping in with my dad and our our family friend. <laughs> and my dad wakes up, buddy, our family friend. And he's like, "Bud, bud." And he's like, uh, he wakes up a little bit. He's like, uh, "Yeah." He's like, dude, Dev just fucking puked all over the tent. And he's like, oh. <laughs> and he just, like, falls back to sleep. <laughs> and then for, like, the rest of the night, I was sleeping in the Suburban with my mom. <laughs> but I kind of I kind of remember that story because, like, my dad always would tell me because it was always kind of funny. But, um, yeah, it was funny. I puked a lot as a kid for some reason. I just, like, I got really sick. I don't know what it was. Uh, I remember I, I fucking... Actually, Eric, you remember when I was drunk? Oh, yeah. Game Eggman. Fucking dude. I Did I tell you I destroyed my bathroom? Oh, no. What did you... Oh, no. Yeah, dude. So, like, I think I was talking to you. And I'm like, I, I gotta go, dude. I gotta go. And, like, I think I hung up on the phone with you. I don't remember if I was talking to you or not. I might have been. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Dude, dude, right after that, I, I tried getting to my bathroom, getting to my toilet, and, like, I fucking blew chunks all over the side of my wall Ugh. and the bathroom or the tub. Ugh. And I found out what I got sick from. I ate a steak that was actually expired. It Ugh. wasn't the oh! alcohol. Yeah. No. Yeah. So I didn't puke from being drunk. I puked because I ate an expired steak. Dude. Expired. Yeah. Oh fuck, dude. But dude, like, it was so funny because I'm sitting there, and I'm barely conscious. Like, I'm like, all I hear in my head is, "You need to clean the bathroom, or your mother's going to kill you." And I'm like, "Oh, you're right." So I'm, I'm like everything is spinning, and I can barely see shit. Like I, I, it is so hard for me to like visualize anything because everything is literally rotating and twisting, and I'm just like picking up just like chunks of fucking vomit, which is like the steak I ate, 
and oh. I'm just like <laughs> trying to clean the bathroom at the same time, and like, dude, it looked like a scene from fucking Scarface when the guy has the chainsaw in the fucking bathroom. It looked like oh, that yeah. because I I, I had um I think I had eaten or drank something that was red, so my puke was red, and. <laughs> Oh man, oh, it was a pain in the ass to clean, but like, it was so funny though, cause like it 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 didn't look like I puked in there, but there was still was some funny. there was still a little bit of tidbits around, <laughs> but like it was oh man, I, I if I wasn't so fucking drunk and panicked, I would have taken a photo of my bathroom before yeah. I cleaned it, but oh my god, it was it was awful. Um, I I oh. never. Uh, like I never really, I and I only puked one time. I didn't like blow chunks multiple times. I, it was only one time, and from that I found out it was just because of that steak I ate. If I would have kept puking, which I didn't have a hung hangover later either, and I had never been that drunk before. Like I've gotten pretty drunk, but I think that was probably like the most I have ever gotten to that point where I was just like completely gone. And I mean, Eric. Eric can can tell you like, I was just laughing like a psychotic fucking psychopath. <laughs> this man was Eggman at one point, and 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 so much so that I capitalized on the moment. So so literally, how I kept telling him like, "Oh, dude, you're dude, you laughing, and the way you're talking, you sound like Eggman on acid." He's like, <laughs> and he just starts laughing sporadically. And then, and then, and then, so I just go along with it, and I'm like, <laughs> "Gee, Eggman, you're not fast. Gee, man, you gotta go fast enough. You're gonna catch me, you nerd." And then, and then he's like, "He's like, listen, how can I catch you, though, Sonic? You're fucking black." I was like, <laughs> <laughs> laughing. I was like, "What?" The hell? Oh my god. I was done. I was like, "Hey, yo, I got the cap. I gotta capture the moment somehow." And then before I could even do it, he's just there <laughs> laughing sporadically. And he's like, <laughs> he just keeps, he just keeps highlighting it. Dude, Sonic, even though you're blue, you're fucking black. I'm like. Okay, dude, wait, 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 wait. Dude, I don't even remember this conversation, bro. That's what's so scary. Oh, I'd care too if I was being chased by racist egg man. I wasn't even racist. <laughs> no, 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 not racist egg man. Freaking old man egg man from, from, the, from the Sonic series that came out on Netflix not too long ago. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, Sonic Prime. Yeah, Sonic Prime. Yeah, that Eggman. No. <laughs> um, My friend told me about that show. I was like, I actually watched it at some point, but you know, I like it. I'm just yeah, waiting yeah. for it to like, continue. Yeah. I um, I'm trying to think of another funny story. Uh, what? I have a funny story. Oh, okay, you go. I'll do tell. Oh shit! This happened quite recently. Okay, so do you do you not know what a chav is? A chap? A chav. G D H A V. I don't think that young chap. No, I, no, okay, no, we don't know what a chav is. What is it? Sounds like a chav. Okay, do you know what roadman is? No. A what? Oh, yeah, a roadman. I heard of a roadman, yeah. Yeah, roadmen are like the fucking people who do drug deals, you know, the fucking rowdy, the rowdy yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the chavs are like the girlfriends of the roadmen. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. Anyways, I was sitting next to one of these chavs, right? And the t and we're about to do a practical thing, you know, like a science experiment, right? Right. And yeah. there was 
and one of the equipment we had to get was on the left of me, which was like right next to the chat. And, you know, I tried to move past her, but for some reason she made it out like I touched her inappropriately. What a and fucking it, bitch. That's what I'm saying. And obviously we started arguing, arguing. Hey yeah. Guys. Guys, I'm playing Fallout New Vegas. And, no, uh, let okay. him finish him sto his story. Hey, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. Anyways, we go into an argument where she calls me animal. The fucking bitch. Yeah. And I just try to move past her again to get the goddamn goggles. And she pushed me. I'm like, the fuck? But the teacher sent her out, so it's all good. Did you slam that bitch's face into the counter? Yeah. No, but I feel like I should have. Yeah, you should have said it's bone shaking time. <laughs> <laughs> Snap Morbid. her fucking neck. <laughs> Golly. Okay, yeah, I don't know what. She was just dumb. Anyways, carry on. Yeah. yeah. What a dumb mm. bitch. Dumbo. Uh, um, do you have any crazy stories, Telebeast? Uh, let's see. I do have the story of how me and two other friends found out how that we have really good Carl Weezer voices. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, shit. So, uh, let's see. Another college night. We were in, like, this, uh, Cards Against Humanity phase. So it was, like, every <laughs> other week we would go buy a pack or whatever. We were having a good time and all. And then, um, one of them was an RA. You guys know what an RA is at college? Uh-uh. No. Uh, it's just like this, uh... It's a college student, basically, but, um... Kind of, like, in the dorm area, where he's, like, uh... Like, if he needed something, you would ask him, like, if he had, like, certain mail, or needed help with your room, or whatever, you kind of, like, go to him. Just kind of like that. Eh? And, uh... But, anyway, they had this, uh... This office and another room next to it. It was like, I asked Cody, that was one of his names, that was his name, Cody, what's in that other room? He's like, oh, I'm not 100% sure, you wanna go check it out? I'm like, all right, sure. All right, we all go in there. We find a, a, a tank of heliums. Oh my god. Not like a big <laughs> tank, but like a, like a small one. It's about like half full. He's like, all right, you know what we gotta do, Cody. We bring it to the gaming room area. They're like, hey. guys, look what we found. Helium. So we spent about 10 minutes just inflating our fucking voices until I get dizzy. <laughs> just, making, just running around, just yelling things with helium. And this is that, like, night, too, so. It was the weekend, but whatever. They're like, alright, I need to go sit down for 15 minutes. Alright, alright, cool. Alright, no problem. Everybody else is getting dizzy and all, and I think we emptied the helium tank too, so whoever needed it had to go home and fill it up. Ugh. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, but then, let's see. I believe by then too, I also ordered, I had a lightsaber I ordered to come in too. So, it was pretty fun running with that around as well. And, uh, I actually had a voice crack that really sounded like a Carl Weezer voice. I was like, oh wait, can I do a Carl Weezer voice? And then, bam, just like that, I, I do like a, a really fucking good Carl Weezer voice. Like I can talk fairly well with it. I could do it on here, but honestly, I'm, like, my headset does not sound like it at all. Just do it anyways. Do it. Carl Weezer do voice. It. Just do it. Don't let you mean people. Stay with your cat. 
Tell the beast, you just need to talk like that for the rest of the night and for the rest of the podcast. Okay. It's actually really good. Thank you. You got any questions over there? You bitch. Yeah, you Kermit. Yeah, yeah fuck you, you fucking, I'm gonna beat you with a fucking stick. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Send your fuck up. I wanna know where Kenny is. I hey, just shut your dick off. Hey, what are you doing here? Hey. I thought you were in the news. Wait, what? Giggity. Kill, kill. And the fuck it. Who invited the 70 year old worldwide veteran pervert? Who invited him? Kimmy, I'm gonna it. fuck your mom! And you! I'm gonna fuck his mom! He said, like, Carl Weezer. Carl Weezer and Eric, Eric Cartman in this fucking VC now. Yeah! yeah. First off, you sound like fucking. Yeah, damn it, Carl Weezer, you sound like you're on your deathbed while smoking a bunch of crap. I don't know what your I point know, is. Eric, you sound like you're a smoker in every fucking part of your body. I... Wait, wait, wait. you little cum stain. You know what, Eric Herman? You know what? At least I got the eggs. Wait, Telebeast. Telebeast, uh, say this. Say, uh, I made a flashlight of Jimmy's mom. I made a flashlight of Jimmy's mom. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look, yeah. I'll be bested! I'll take the first Oh my god, dude. But yeah, that's basically how the rest of your night went. And a very, very long time of a college semester for Cody because he hated us after finding out the Carl Weezer voice. <laughs> that's pretty legendary. I know. He can't do it for shit, so we make fun of him for it. <laughs> <laughs> now say croissant. 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 Hey guys. Yeah. So, um, you guys, how many of you people here have played Fallout in Vegas before? I have. I played with Jimmy's Me. mom. Okay, you guys. You guys remember um, Eddie Ede, that flying iBot? Uh huh. I was able to repair Ede at level one. You know, because usually you, you won't be able to repair Ede until much later in the game. But if you're able to, if you're smart enough, you get the components, the components to repair them. You can fix them without having a high repair or science skill. You just need to find the parts. You need to find like a couple of sensor modules, some scrap electronics, and some. You know, some a couple. I forgot the other components that you need. I was, I was like, holy shit! I got Edie as a companion really early into the game. It's really cool. And uh, so yeah, I'm going to the fucking Great Divide to get some of that fucking riot armor. But uh, yeah, that's uh, cool. Yeah. What's what's y'all's favorite faction in Fallout? Uh, Jimmy's man. <laughs> I don't. I don't really know what my favorite. I don't really know what my favorite faction. Oh, never mind. Enclave. Fuck. Fucking enclave. What the fuck is the enclave? They're the bad guys of Fallout. Yet they're super based. They're very sexy. All I know. All I know about. All I know about Fallout Vegas is that it's just fuck the NCR. Yeah, fuck the NCR. I kill. I on this pretty some playthrough that I started doing. I just like you know as soon as I got eighty eight as a companion earlier into the game, I um I just started going after all the uh, all the NCR soldiers in Prem. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go into the uh, I'm gonna walk go into the Lonesome Round DLC and because uh, if you um if you I saw a playthrough video where you can get like the right gear armor, which is really good. If you have the Lonesome Room DLC, even though you're supposed to be like, it says you gotta be like level 25 or higher 
to do this DLC. I mean, you don't you don't have to be, but like it's recommended because it's a really fucking hard DLC. There's death claws everywhere. You know, some of the enemies are really fucking tough. But what's cool is when you enter the fucking silo base at the beginning, you can loot all the marked men, all the corpses of all the dead marked men. You know, and uh, the only obstacles would be like some fucking Securitrons, some fucking robots. You know, that those would be your only obstacles. Be if you if you're smart enough, you can find all the right stuff to fucking sell to the. Uh, they, they, it's like these little machines that you can also tell. They also have like these little shops inside of them. If you um, if you sell the if you sell the stuff to the uh, to the machines, the shops, you can um. You can have enough caps to buy the fucking riot armor. That's like some of the best armor you can get in the fucking game. And I think it's you know, so, okay, that's a really cool exploit. So I usually do that at the beginning. I usually do that in all my playthroughs of Fallout New Vegas. Is I go to the Lotus of Road DLC and I just get the riot armor. And then come back to fucking New Vegas and I'm done. So yeah, that's I a never, really cool exploit. I never really had like a strategy for playing New Vegas. But I know for Fallout 3, any time I played it, I would go to the Mothership Zeta DLC just so I can get alien weapons because they're super fucking broken. Yeah. And I'd upgrade my science skill to, to where, like, the alien weapons are fucking awesome. Like, I love the alien guns. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like the alien guns Fallout in Vegas. Like, if you got the Wild Wasteland... Um, perks, unfortunately, I don't have that in my playthrough this time. I have the heavy order, order one and the, uh, and the good natured, um, perks this time. Yeah, you know, usually I do Wild Wasteland, I, I was like, okay, um. That's, like, the only perk for the negative perks that's not even really that bad. It's actually more beneficial. Yeah, because, like. Are the Wild Lake Plane, you can get the fucking alien gun. You just gotta go to the right spot, like, at the far end of the map up north. You know, and then you can get the fucking alien gun after you take down the aliens. But uh, by that point, you should already be, like, maybe, I don't know, level 15 or something. So, you know. But something fun I like to do when I'm playing Fallout New Vegas is I always... So, so um, if I want to get to New Vegas early... I found a very, it's a very, very, very specific route you can take. So, you know, some people, on their first time, when they try to get to New Vegas early, they get fucking completely decimated by the Death Claws. Because if you just go down Sloan, instead of taking the path, where you go through Prim to fucking Nipton, and you go to fucking, you know, Novak... You know, and then so on. So if you take that regular route, you're fine. But if you go try to go past Sloan, go down those railroad tracks, you're gonna get fucking decimated by death claws. Someone found a fucking very specific route that requires a whole bunch of fucking stealth boys and a good snake skill. If I'm doing like a stealth run of Fallout New Vegas, where I have a like crap sneak set to high at the beginning of the game, where I'm building my character, I'll usually um. I'll usually take that route, but, um, for this one, I'm not doing that, but that's, you know, you know, whenever I'm in, like, a, whenever I want to do, like, a sneak build, or stealth build for my character, that's what I'll do. I always felt like the stealth in Fallout never really f worked that good, compared to the sneaking in Elder Scrolls. I don't know. I've always felt like sneaking in Fallout was just kind of weird. I could never well, get it to work right. Well, you know, it worked. It just works, as Todd Howard says. <laughs> Fuck Todd Howard. Stinky. Yeah. Todd Howard. Todd, hey Todd, how are exactly are you gonna fucking get this game to work? I don't know. It just works. It's not a bug, it's a feature. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking... Ragdolling all over the place. That's that's a new thing we came up with. <laughs> yeah. What's the worst game you guys have ever played? Uh, what? The hardest game? 
No, the worst game you've ever played. Chibi Robo Ziplash. I have no idea what that is. It sounds really I'm not explaining that. <laughs> Honestly, um, y'all are gonna hate me for this, but I never had any fun with Grand Theft Auto 3. I don't hate the game. I don't play that game. Okay, so, um, I have a lot of respect for the early 3D Grand Theft Autos. The only one I really like is Sandra. It's like the original, like the Grand Theft Auto 3 3D trilogy. Mm -hmm. Andreas by City and 3 to 1. I like the most is San Andreas. The only one I really like is San Andreas. Now, um, I tried, I, a couple of years ago is when I actually started playing 3 in Vice City, when I first played 3 in Vice City for the first time. I had them both on PlayStation 2 because I had the dual pack. I bought that from a local game store called Video Game Rescue, which, by the way, if you're ever in the Jacksonville area in Florida, go to Video Game Rescue if you want to find a really cool game, local game store that's not GameStop. You'll, you'll fucking love it. But I was like the dual pack. And I was like, oh, cool. The Grand Theft Auto 3 and Vice City, I've always wanted to play these games. I used to play them cool. And I, I, I played Grand Theft Auto 3, and I was just like, this is, wow, this is, uh, this is very, this is very primitive. Now, I was saying it's the worst game I ever played. I'm just saying it was the biggest. It was the most disappointing game I played because everybody hypes it up. It's like, oh, it's it's it opened the door for all these open world games. Like, okay, yeah, I can see that, but I don't know. I just didn't have fun with Vice City and Three as much as most people did. Which honestly, I get it. A lot of people grew up these games and they still love them because of nostalgia. And I'm like, that's perfectly fine. There's a lot of old games I love that aren't exactly very good and don't hold up very well. But for me, I unfortunately did not get to grow up with those games. The, only, the first Grand Theft Auto that I played was Grand Theft Auto 17. You know, so, and I know a lot of people, you know, are kind of split down the middle on that one too. Because the driving controls and everything and the color layouts and everything. It's, kind of, it's a really gritty game. But Wait, that's also why Grand Theft Auto 4. Oh, 4 is great. Yeah. I hear a lot of people kind of bitch about that one, like the driving and that. They say they don't like the story. It's too it's too dark. You know, I mean, it's like I, I think that's a fucking cop out because I think the story is great in that game. That yeah, it's a great it is a great story. It's actually my favorite Grand Theft Auto because one of the reasons it's because of the story. But another another really bad one video game that I actually consider really bad that I fucking played, it was Call of Duty Ghosts. Like, I just like, wow, this is, uh... Everybody hates that uh, one, it seems. I like the multiplayer fine, but, like, you know, it's just like, this is when, okay, a lot of people feel like Modern Warfare 3 is when they started to drop the ball on Call of Duty, but I actually really liked Modern Warfare. Yeah, I don't get. I, I don't understand why people don't like Modern Warfare Three, honestly. And another game that I absolutely love that I feel like is overhated is Duke Nukem Forever. And I get it. I get why people don't like that game. Oh, we remember when the first trailer came out in two thousand and one, and it was so different. And we, we, the game was stuck in development hell for like six years, and then we finally came out, and it wasn't what people were expecting. Fair enough, but. I'm sorry, it's just a fun game to me. And Damn, that's a nice wreck. <laughs> I like the mechanics. Sleep. It's, you know, I think it's Duke Nukem at his most Duke Nukem. And a lot of people will hate me for this, but I think it's the best Duke Nukem game ever. And, you know, Duke Nukem 3D is also great. But... Duke Nukem Forever for me, I, I just feel like it gets too much hate. But, you know, yeah. I'm the same um, way with Doom 3. I think Doom 3 is really fucking good, and I think that... Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. That one's also great. I love that fucking game. I thought... I think that's one of my favorite survival horror games, and I love survival horror. I have a heart for that genre of games. Even Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Minecraft can be pretty scary. <laughs> fucking Minecraft from like when it first came out was so different from what it is now. Oh, yeah. 
Agreed. But you know, what's cool? I'm thinking of Doom 3, My Ice Girlfriend. Um, Christmas was like the last time I hung out with her. You know, we were exchanging gifts, kind of a sad you note know, to end on, really, honestly. But she got me Doom 3, the Xbox 360 port for Doom 3, for playing for my Xbox One, because I wanted it. Because it, you know, it also came with like the Xbox 360 ports of Doom 1 and 2, which I wanted to have in my collection. So, you know, I literally, I now own literally every version you can get on Xbox One of Doom. I just need to get the Xbox port for Doom 3, and then I'll have like all the Xbox versions of Doom. But it came with a poster for that was pretty much the main reason why I wanted to get it. Not only because I wanted to play Doom 3 again on 360 this time, but I also wanted to have a Doom poster in my room because it's one of my because the original Doom is one of my all time favorite video games. But uh yeah. Um now one game I think honestly it is a bad game and I think without Rose tinted glasses. I would consider it the worst game I have played, but it's uh, it's called Motocross Mania Three. <gasps> and, what uh, you know about Motocross Mania Three? Holy shit! Oh yeah. shit! Did I miss anything? A <laughs> fucking dude! <laughs> Motocross Mania Three is that's a that's a that's a wild fucking game. Holy shit! <laughs> It's basically a Road Rash 3D clone. You know, you know, I love it because it's got a charm to it. Hold on, hold on a second, hold on. Who's playing Distance? Oh, shit. Yeah, oh, what the fuck? Hey, what's up, uh, Dan? I, I, I missed... Did I miss something? Oh fuck! Cause no, like, I was we sleeping peacefully. <laughs> we're, we're doing a podcast, and Blade left. I didn't realize Blade left the fucking podcast. Yeah. Oh, oh God. Um, yeah, we've been we've been doing this podcast for two, two hours. Two hours now. Yeah, exactly. Two hours and a minute. Two hours and two minutes. I didn't even, I didn't even realize, and I feel like I'm so late with this. No, don't, don't even worry about it. It's cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So here's another game. here's another game I do like that I feel like also gets too much age. Mafia 3. I had that on my Xbox One. I love all three of the Mafia games. I have all... I um, I want to play the original version of Moth, the first Mafia just to try it out. Even though I heard it's not all that great, I'll probably have a fucking hard time with it. But I play... Usually, okay, so this is what I usually do before I play remakes. I always make sure I play the original. But when I saw that Mafia 1, the Definitive Edition, the remake was on sale for like 10 bucks off of the Microsoft store on like a really big Black Friday super time, I was like, you know what, I can't pass it. I'm breaking my rule here, but I really want to try it because it looks so good. And holy fucking shit, I played the Mafia 1 remake, and I gotta tell you guys, even though I never played the original... I can safely say this is one of the greatest video game remakes I've ever played. Oh my fucking god, it is so amazing. Mafia 3 is also great. You know, because honestly, it kind of strays away from the typical, you know, romanticization of like Mafia, Italian monster culture. You know, it moves. It, I like the time period it's set in. I think the 60s were kind of was kind of a really interesting time for the mob and for all that weird shit going on back then. But, like, because I, I, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to, like, mob history, you know? And what's also a cool, so, cool story I have to tell y'all that kind of ties into that is that when I went to Vegas back in November 2021, when I went to Vegas, I visited the Mob Museum. And what's cool about that place is that actually used to be the original courthouse where all the members of the mob that were hiding out in Vegas when they were setting up all the where they were running the casinos that was where they were all tried at and um, they even they had a presentation where you could sit in the courtroom and they had this fucking uh, you know this screen come on and it was like a projector reel and it was showing all the events all the news broadcasts all the news footage and everything and I was in awe. I was like, holy shit, this is fucking awesome. 
And what's cool, the coolest part about that whole experience, I they had the wall. Okay, so you guys, have you guys heard about the St. Valentine's Day Massacre? I didn't hear it. Uh, maybe. Okay. So this was uh, when Al Capone, the famous gangster, um, he ambushed one of his uh, a rival mob some rival mafia members where he had a bunch of his, you know, gang, a bunch of his goons dressed up as police officers and they made it look like they were being arrested. So what they did was all the goons that were dressed up as gang, as police officers lined up all the rival mobsters against the wall and Al Capone came in and they all had Tommy guns and they all executed them, you know, like an execution by firing squad. And it was known as the Valentine's Day Massacre. I think I'm missing some details here. Because I forgot the whole entire story. But that's basically how it happened. And they had the original wall. They had taken that entire wall from the building. And they took it to this fucking museum. And put it on display. And I saw it. I was like. You mean to tell me. I asked the door. I was like wait. You mean to fucking tell me. That's the actual wall. That those people were lined up against. And fucking killed. He was like yeah. I shit you not, that's the real wall. Like, no fucking way, that's some... It's like, people are fucking killed up against this wall. I'm like, that is so cool. Like, they even had a room, an exhibit, where you could see... Like, okay, so... It, it was very common back then when a member of the mob, a high-ranking member of the mob was killed, whenever they were killed, you know, they usually... It, it was very much sometimes in a very public way and because this happened so very often back then you know the mob hits on each other the media would gather in and t- would come would gather up and take photos of these dead bodies and put them in the newspapers back then and I went in this exhibit and it, it was a display room of all the fucking pictures the media would take of all these fucking dead bodies, and I saw all these fucking dead gangsters on a giant wall, just all compiled together like some kind of fucked up collage, and it was fucking gnarly. Like, there was this man, there was this guy who was fucking burned alive in his car, this guy executed by gunshot to the head, a man completely riddled in bullets, you know, that was just like, oh my fucking god, this is brutal. So, like, I, I'm just fascinated by that stuff, really. You know, so, Mafia, so that's why the Mafia games I really love so much, because they take a lot of influence from those old stories. They mention the Prohibition. They meant they reference, you know, how people would, how members of the mob would illegally sell cartons of cigarettes, you know, to people on the side. They would steal trucks that would, you know, have these cards of cigarettes and they drive over somewhere and they start illegally selling them. Sometimes even the police officers. So, yeah. yeah, Because a lot of the uh, members of the mob had tie-ins with the police force and all that. uh, Mostly do the briberies and all that, but, you know, it's just like... I just find... I just... I was just geeking the fuck out. My grandmother was like, you know, Jordan, you need to calm down. I was like, I'm too fucking excited for this shit man this is this is like I'm like a kid in a candy shop right now <laughs> this uh, is great a- Eric I've always pictured you as the main character from fucking Mafia 3 I don't know why yes cause g- cause first off the hair and the attire yeah yes what oh, you mean Lincoln Clay yes he just said I like I just like the Giga mm-hmm. Chat Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we went way off subject. Like, worst video games. Um, so the worst, asking- the worst racing game I've ever played would probably be DT Racer. That was fucking horrible. <laughs> fucking, it's a, like a Korean, I- I'm going to have to make a review on it. It's so bad. It's not fun to play. It's just poorly put together and like <laughs> it looks cool aesthetically but it's just not 
a fun game to play. The the best thing about the game is the intro. Like the intro is like really, really interesting, and it's it's very different for for like a, a racing game's introduction because it starts out and like it, it's really weird. It's like this girl jogging down the street, and then like, and then it cuts to like cuts to yeah, it's it's Jimmy's mom, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so like Girl, Jimmy's just, mom is jogging down the street and fucking these cars just like roll up to like a stoplight and then they saw Jimmy's mom in the street <laughs> and then like they roll up and they're at the stoplight and they're waiting for the light to switch and then like they all take off and they start racing and then like this third car shows up and then one car like crashes and then it crashes the other car and then like the third car drifts around the cars and you know takes off and like that's kind of i don't know it's something about the intro is just really cool and different it's kind of over the it's not really over the top but it's very out of the ordinary for most like racing game intros and something about it is just really cool but it, overall, the game is dog shit. Like, it's not a fun game to play. The car physics are atrocious. Like, the car's understeering is so fucking strong that, like, you have to... You, you can't even turn if you're going grandma speed. Like, the car just refuses to steer. It's it's horrible. <laughs> but, uh, it's made by some I, Korean developer. I got something for you. I got a question for y'all. What's a video game that has, like, the coolest opening cinematic like the coolest intro ever oh fuck like, christ that's a hard question um i mean some of my favorite racing game intros from oh i i think i think need for speed underground one's intro is really good and same with most wanted and underground two like the old need for speed games had really cool introductions but um, like, let's see, what what else was there? Smash Cars had a cool introduction. Drum Racers was kind of basic, but it was just, like, gameplay with music over it. Uh, Gran Turismo 4 had a really nice intro. Um, that one really is nostalgic as fuck. Uh, the intro to Test Drive Wide Open is pretty cool. Uh, Test Drive Off-Road 2's intro is really cool. I mean, it... It's essentially, like, footage of real-life vehicles going through, like, the mud. But it's very 90s, so it's got, like, a weird 90s grunge aesthetic with, like, heavy metal guitar going over the background. <clears throat> but it's... I don't know. I really like the intro to that game. It's very unique. Um, but as far as my favorite, I'd have to say... Uh, I'm trying to think here. There's so many fucking games. Um, Yo, uh, sorry to interrupt. If if you don't mind me, uh. Yeah, go ahead. You know the accelerate accelerates meme that he just posted. No one was so based. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. I I shared it to my profile, and I'm gonna bet everyone's gonna go mad over it. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, you know, Accelerates. He he's like it's so funny because when he puts the G Giga Chad face on, it doesn't really look any different. Like he just has that face already. I <laughs> I, bro, I I, I bro. wish. I wish he was pulling chicks, cause like, I think Reese is a very handsome guy, and he deserves a nice yeah. girlfriend. Um, Re Re Reese deserves that Acceleriz. <laughs> <laughs> you already got the Acceleriz. Just need to find a girlfriend. <laughs> For real. Um, but yeah, no, that that meme was pretty good. I actually it, did a meme similar to that. Basically, it was a, uh, it was me, and it's like somebody saying you're not really you're not really kurt wild and then when it gets to the drop i pull out all three of kurt wild's cars so even including <laughs> the z36 one so like mm. it's the tech slingshot the street breed and the z36 one 
<laughs> so it's pretty dope. But okay, so it's just I don't favorite... get. Oh, well, all right. Go ahead. Okay, so my favorite video game intro of all time is the intro to Soul Calibur Two. I don't know. Every time I fucking watch this intro, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It's it's honestly my favorite fighting game, even though I haven't played it in a very long time. But I remember just playing the fuck out of it while I was a kid on my PlayStation Two. Uh, uh, yeah. Speaking of uh, video game intros, if you uh, has anyone ever listened to One Good Midnight Maximum Tunes Five DX Plus main menu music? That shit slaps a lot. I know the soundtrack to Maximum Tune 5, but, like, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, fucking soundtrack slaps. I wish that game had, like, an intro to it. Dude, okay. I mean, there's not that, there's not a an intro, but then, like, when it just, when it just goes to the main menu music, oh, boy, you know, you are gonna s- spend all of your oh, savings yeah. for that fucking <laughs> arcade game. Dude, so, I just, I just remembered the intro... Oh, so I'm actually playing Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero right now, and the intro to this game is actually pretty fucking good. Um, I forgot it's actually a really good intro. Uh, it's I I can't really explain it. It's sort of just cars racing, but the way it's set up is just really neat. It's definitely one of my yeah. favorite intros. Back to the video game intros. Um, well, I want to elaborate on Soul Calibur Two intro a little bit. It's not just the music, it's just the fucking cinematics, the fucking graphics. It looks like you're watching a fucking movie, because you're seeing all these characters fighting, seeing traveling and shit, you know, and then there's just there's just one part, I've seen the comment section of the YouTube video showing up, and people felt kind of, this part was a little weird, but I always thought it was cool. I forget his name, but he's like a, he's like a, he's a character of, like, Hispanic descent, and then you, he kind of, like, you see him hiding in an alleyway, and the police are trying to find him, and he's hiding, you just hear this fucking Mexican, Spanish guitar music playing, and it's just like, it just does that for, like, a few, like, 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 like 15 seconds, and then it just goes back into the epic music. I was like, okay, that's pretty fucking cool. But everyone in the comments is just like, ah, oh, that, that took me out of it. But every time I watch that fucking intro, there's some other intros there I'd like to mention as well. Um, another video game intro I absolutely fucking love. So, um, I used to play, I still play these games to this very day, but one of my fear video game intros is the uh, intro to the PS2 port of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which, in my opinion, I think might be my favorite PS2 game of all time. Oh, and also... I forgot to mention, the Spider-Man movie game, the first Spider-Man movie game, had a fucking kick-ass intro. Because if you played it, you know I'm, you you know what I'm talking about. You know it's fucking sick. It's got this fucking cool, like, electronic soundtrack to it. And, you know, you just see Spider-Man fighting against Green Goblin, him swinging from building to building. It's just like, this used to hype me the fuck up when I was a kid. And when I saw it, I still remember, like, the first time I saw it, you know, because I have a very distinct, very vivid memory of when I first got my PS2 when I was, like, eight years old. And one of the first games was Spider-Man movie game. Okay, so I remember, I think the first four games I played were Hot Wheels Velocity X, Spider-Man the movie game, Harry Potter and Prisoner of Azkaban, and Soul Calibur 2. Like the first, I think Soul Calibur 2 I got at a later time, but those are the first three I got, I remember getting. And all three of them had pretty fucking cool intros. You know, especially Prisoner of Azkaban. That, that shit was fire. You know, I, I'm, I honestly, let's be honest, video game intros like that need to make a fucking comeback. I can't think of any newer game recently that has had a kick at that's intro involving cinematic like that yeah they don't like and what i fucking hate too is like so many games nowadays don't even show off gameplay for their trailers it's just stupid cinematic shit and then like they they don't have like cinematics for like the intro which is really fucking weird yeah it's just like okay it's it's like also that kind of reminds it's a lot of topic but I saw a trailer for a new Wolf Feral dog movie called Stray. 
And something I hate, I, I become, and this is, I notice this is becoming more and more common with movies nowadays. The trailer will just basically give away the whole fucking movie. Yeah, it's fucking dumb. Yeah, yeah if you watch the trailer for Stray, it's like, basically, you just watch the whole entire movie. And we all know it's gonna fucking flop. You watch that trailer, it's like, yeah, this movie's gonna fucking I hate flop. A, I hate A24 films, those movies suck. Um, A24 films, wait, I forgot what... I forgot what the company is that. The, they're just shitty. They made, like, all those scary movies that everybody thinks are scary, but they're not. Like, yeah. Mids Midsummer and fucking Hereditary. But anyway, oh. Eric, w Eric, what's your favorite video game intro of all time? Uh, he's kind of left. Huh? He's huh? Eric left? Yeah. Oh. He God damn it. Just... He must have fell asleep. Late. Damn. Probably. What about you, Telebeast? What's your favorite? I mean, Carl. Uh, whatever that G Jimmy Neutron game is called. <laughs> Top percent because Jimmy's mom is in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only right answer. You guys are all wrong. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, you sound like that uh, kid from Jimmy Neutron. Not yeah, Sheen. Carl. Oh, Jimmy, I Carl. Oh, Carl. Oh, Carl. oh, yeah. Remember oh, yeah. Bitch. <laughs> God, that that impression is so accurate, actually. It's so good. Thank you. You're uh, also pretty accurate. Jimmy's mom. And your mom. <laughs> <laughs> what's your what, what what what's your favorite intro, uh, Darren? To any game? I I don't I don't really have any intro, but more like right it's more like it's just the uh, was it more like it's just the intro, like, not intro, more like the main menu start up to a game. I don't know if that counts or not, but yeah, it feels I mean, like it that, it, that's yeah, still yeah. something that's kind of cool. So I mean, I can understand, yeah. Maybe the one gun midnight, uh, the maximum tune five DX plus uh, like intro where like when it just the main menu just like pops up. You know that shit's gonna be good, and I actually love that entry. Was it? I love that entry uh, music ever since. Uh, was it? That shit came out. Yeah. Or maybe the uh, entry maximum six, uh, maximum maximum tune six RR. That shit was good. Literally, yeah. that yeah. intro music makes you want to head, like you know, <laughs> just fucking nod your head every fucking goddamn time because of how good. That shit was. Yeah. Hey. I feel like uh, Trance is sort of dead, but um, Yuzo Koshiro kind of revived it. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna ask because you got Maximum Tune to run on the computer, right? Yeah, you can. Uh, use Techno Parrot. Okay, because I was gonna ask if you could set it up for me, or help me set oh. it up, because like I don't oh, know. Oh shit. Now, now, now it's a little bit tricky. I've ever tried it though, but. It's quite tricky, I'll tell you that. Mm. Uh, my, my friend Head, well, Headless could probably help me out with it. More or less, yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, speaking of the meme that I said about Accelerys, I don't get why Mattel is just like milking the Skyline R34 and the Countach for like their RLCs. <laughs> it's just to me, it kind of sounds dumb these days. Like Mattel are just running out of ideas, yet they don't consider like the best option to basically like uh what is it release whatever cars there is like their their like sh bunch of like fantasy rosters like for example yeah. i've ever seen a tweet of like jc squared like hey why don't we you know have fantasy rlcs like ask like i don't know put them with like real writers or something to me that would have been good but yeah, yeah consumers <laughs> right? Yeah, where are the Jimmy Neutron character cards? I'd buy those. Yeah. I probably. I did. I did. I I, Jimmy's mom's I personally, I personally <laughs> wouldn't, but I, I personally wouldn't, but I'll let you go ahead and do it. <laughs> but you go. No. I just said my car. It'd be Jimmy's mom or Chris. That would be my car. That would be my car. <laughs> Hey boys, I'm gonna go ahead and hop off here. I'm about to hit the air, but it was thank you for having me on this podcast. Yeah, once any, again, anytime. 
Absolutely, man. It's always a fucking pleasure. Uh, maybe yeah, a little bit late, late, but... Yeah. Three, three. Know, I wasn't done this time, but, you know, still, I had one time. Y'all mm -hmm. have a good night, and, uh, as TJ could the amazing atheist once said, mm -hmm. peace the fuck out. Later, y'all. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Um, I'm trying to think here. Uh, oh, Jesus. Yeah, what, what have you guys been up to? Just, I went to a trip in, uh, Santiago, uh, yesterday. It was, it was kind of like a nice historic city, but I have a fear that, like, I probably get bored, oh, I probably would get bored over it, because, uh, I don't know, sometimes to me, like, the hills look nice, it's just that sometimes historic cities might get a little bit boring the more I live in it. Yeah. <clears throat> Where? So, you said Santiago? Santiago de Compostela. Uh, it's in Spain. Oh, okay. It's a uh, pretty nice city. Um, it's like in the northwestern part of Spain, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, yeah, it's nice, basically. Like, I don't really have any other comment to it other than nice, so... Yeah. Is there, like, a lot of local people that, you know, kind of... There's a lot of there's a lot of Asians that uh, tour around here. But, you know, local people are nice also as well, so... Huh. More or less, it's pretty nice. The food is actually really good as well. I ate, like, beef toast and uh, salmon toast, and it was so good. I'd give that one a 9 out of 10. So, uh, do you... <laughs> do you do you do you like travel a lot, Darren, or like? Uh, when I was a little kid, I do travel like a lot. Let's just say, um, more more like uh, how do I say it? <clears throat> Before now, um, even though I'm studying abroad, which is in Spain right now, um, I travel to Singapore, Malaysia, Japan, Vietnam, Australia. Right now, Spain and Cheshire. God damn. And you said I from know. you said from Indonesia originally, it, right? Yeah, Indonesia. Ah. So, why why are you over in Spain right now? Is it like college or something or? Yeah, I, I said I was you know uh, studying abroad basically uh, more or less like I'm trying to study the language first, then um, I'll try to enroll in the university in there. So basically, I've already graduated high school. Now I just need to go to university. If you know what I mean. Ah, okay. So <coughs> are you trying to do like a lang language major or something? Uh, no, more or less, like, I have to learn, like, the language, uh, first, then, um, we'll, uh, then we'll try to, like, process, uh, then, like, most of the school and basically myself would try to process everything to basically get me to a Spanish university, because at the same time, like, you have to get that, uh, what is it, you have to get that certificate first, because, like, I think everything they're gonna teach is in Spanish as well, so yeah, m more or less it would make sense. Oh, okay. God, I had a sore throat because I just woke up. <laughs> I uh, just woke up. <laughs> so good. Um, yeah, I figured you were asleep, so it is, mm -hmm. it is. I think, almost 12 in the morning where I'm at. I don't know where Tel Aviv lives. I don't remember. Um, right now it's uh, 8. Yeah. 8 a.m. Uh, still dark. <laughs> yeah, it's still dark. It, it feels so different compared to my home country because like usually 8 a.m. Um, when you wake up in the morning, it's like the sun's just shining. Well, this one's just oh shit, it's still dark. Fuck. <laughs> <coughs> so, like, how long have you been there then? Uh, uh so far, um, considering the fact that I've lived since October of last year, uh, so basically, one, two, three. Four, five months basically but i'm gonna go back around august to indonesia oh okay is all, you, all your families there in indonesia yeah yeah uh they're basically in like one city uh in which i could basically uh was it visit them every day and something like that i miss them a lot because you know i had good memories with them because uh, at one point when in um when i was in my child in my childhood days i used to live with my cousins together um for like about four years before I moved back to like my old house so oh okay Should, but the good the best thing about Indonesia is that like 
when you actually want to get accelerators or everything like that, everything is much cheaper compared to eBay prices. I mean, oh god, don't get me started on that cancer. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's awful. <sighs> eBay is just... <clears throat> oh boy. Hell. So... Or should I... Oh, when, oh. You, when are you going to get that video up, dude? <laughs> I'm so sorry, it's just like, I've been busy with like... Exams and everything, you know? Yeah. It's just like... Whenever I want to try to make a video, it's just I feel so tired, like to the point that like I just want to sleep. But then at the same time, like I have to remind myself to do it later yeah. on. No, I'm not. I mean, I'm sorry if I'm not. I mean, I'm sorry if I keep on uh, delaying all the time, but more like I, uh, I'm just well. It's not that I'm lazy. It's just I mean, like I feel like I am a little bit lazy, but it's just like I just hate the fact that I lack discipline as well. So maybe. More or less, I'll try to get that video done. I just don't know if I was it. I just don't know if I feel like I would finish it or not. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's no big deal. I'm not like stressed about it. I was just curious. Like, I know. I was like, where is it? <laughs> you know. So <laughs> I I know. It's just well, you know, I got busy with shit a lot, uh, like a lot of shit. So it's more or less well, trying to get I'm trying to get up uh, back on track, but. Considering the fact that, like, uh, I have a lot of shit for, like, next week, and I have an exam, maybe in the weekends I try to finish it. So, uh, yeah. yeah. More or less. Nah, that's all good. <laughs> um. I plan to finish it on uh, February, but, oh well, it's like... I still need to tell myself to, hey finish this fucking video <laughs> i have a lot of video ideas like planned in my head so yeah more or less <clears throat> yeah no i i totally get it like i sometimes will try to like come up with a video idea and i just never get around to it or or whatever yeah literally the same with me but oh well yeah i've been i've been really enjoying like doing these podcasts though like this is the only. This is the second podcast uh, so mm. far, um, but it's. I don't know. Like we got a lot of views actually for, the last podcast. So, uh, pretty happy about that. Like seventy something views. So, uh, uh, you know, it's pretty pretty awesome. Um, I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find your channel. Let's see how. Let's see how many views is that. Right here. Ah, uh, seventy-five. Pretty nice. Yeah. I don't know how it got so many views. Like, I don't know if I. I did put like accelerators in the tag. And <laughs> things like that. So maybe that helped. But. Yeah. I'm not sure about mine though. It's uh, I've I've put it some like accelerators tags, but uh, kind of helped a little bit. It's yeah. like 135, 105. But my uh, recent one did kind of black. <laughs> 55. Views. What, what was your most recent one? I think I watched it, but I don't. Uh, 24 hours of Daytona, but I put Acid Runner in it. Dude, Acid Runner is oh. fucking good for Daytona. Like, in the road course, yes, but I don't mean the uh, oval one. Yeah, I know what you mean. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't really thought about, like, the song for, like, Daytona Oval, but I know. The road course actually, um, I I know I know what song to put for that road course. So, yeah, that uh, makes sense. It's pretty cool. Is it uh, just me, or like I just want like people to collect more fantasy casting yourself, like being a licensed purist, just like you know, if you ever. If you ever have known about like something related to Transformers, you know the term about G1 purist and uh, was it G1 purist and all that stuff who and uh, all the all the other people who enjoyed like other takes on the character and stuff like that. Just yeah. oh, G1 is just perfect and everything. Mm. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Like, I I collected Transformers for a while. I didn't get super deep into it, but. Like, as a kid, I did like having Transformers. I might have a few still. I think I mm. have... I know I still have, like, some of the Michael Bay ones. Uh, so that's Michael... when I got into Transformers, but... At some point in time, I just realized, like, the toys were 
kind of cheap in quality at some point, and I just didn't really like collecting them anymore, so I kind of uh, just third, stopped. But I have third a party. Huh? Third party uh, ones are actually quite better, I'm not gonna lie. They yeah. Are. Um. But. <clears throat> Like, I got a few Transformers from a friend of mine, uh, and, um, they were pretty cool. Like, I recently, like, my most recent Transformers purchase was a G1 Starscream, uh, specifically the Correlation one. So, like, he's uh. got his, like, throne and the crown and the cape uh, and stuff and I, wait i remember this line coronation starscream this is bad comedy yeah that's just bad comedy is that you megatron here's a guess or here's a hint yeah <laughs> um, just shoot to death and fucking, he becomes like the ghost of starscream yeah he just fucking kills him um <laughs> but yeah fucking like i always like that i don't know i i always thought that was like a cool scene in the movie and then a Starscream is my favorite Transformer so um for, for me Lockdown will always be my favorite Transformer cause I kinda liked him back in Age of Extinction when that movie came out I know the movie was a little bit horrible but I do have a guilty pleasure for it <laughs> yeah I know what you mean I really like Dark of the Moon. Oh, Dark of the Moon as well. That's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, I really like that one a lot for some reason. I don't know. Something about it was just really good. I think it's also because Megan Fox wasn't in that movie. And, like, I always find the girlfriends super fucking annoying. But, like, the girl for that movie was okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. At least she made Megatron to, uh, was it? <laughs> Five fucking set them low. <laughs> Wait, she did what? She basically, like, she basically goaded that fucking Megatron to shoot Sentinel and, you know, just try to rip him apart. Oh. In the movie, yeah. But, uh, was it? For me, Lockdown will always be my favorite villain, because at the same time. Dude doesn't working for anyone. He only just gets paid. He only he only sides with them if he gets paid. Yeah. And he's just basically doing his job. And like, come on, his robot, his design is so fucking cool. Like, other than the animated one, the fourth movie's design is just it just looks so good. Yeah, it's, it's pretty movie. cool. The fact that he even turns into a Lamborghini Vettel just what sells it for me. That's why, like, Lockdown will always be my favorite Transformer. But if it, if we were talking about an Autobot, I'd say Roadbuster. He got he got so much potential for that movie, but it's just wasted potential. I kind of hate it. Who was it? Roadbuster. Uh, the one that transformed into a uh, NASCAR uh, 88 AMP. I have the figure with me right now. Oh. One of the wreckers that tore the fucking Decepticon pilot apart in the third movie. Wait, which which NASCAR does he turn into? Is it uh, green and white Impala eighty eight of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Oh yeah, just yeah, Dale Earnhardt's yeah. Um. Yeah, I liked uh, the green Corvette guy. Uh crosshairs. Yeah, I, I, I still remember the fucking Autobots names after like all these years. Uh, I also really liked Hound. Ratchet ah, Hound. John. Ah, what? Hound. Yeah. Funny John Goodman voice. I kind of I kind of like the guy. I'm gonna like. Yeah. Um. But like Ratchet Hound and. Uh. Fucking Jazz. Um. I'm trying to remember, uh, like, all the Transformers I liked from the, the Bay movies. Like, I hated the story. God, uh, the story was weak. It's just weak. Yeah, but, like, the Transformers themselves looked really cool. I don't I don't care if Optimus actually has, like, the flames on it, but the fact that he just looks cool with it just... It sells, sells it for me. Yeah, it does, it does work. Um, 
like, I don't know. Like, I think if the story wasn't so bad, then, like, those movies are actually pretty good. Like, the, the animation and things like that. The other thing I don't like, though, is, like, there's always jokes. Like, the Transformers are always kind of joking, and it's kind of uh. cringy. I guess didn't really care for their lines of dialogue, but, um, you know. For me, like, despite they, ha- despite them having jokes, the third movie is where it sells for me. Like, even though there's only a bit of, I mean, like, there's only some of it, like, the first half, the second half, they, like, tone it down a bit. Yeah. But, like, it's basically, like, if you know Avengers Endgame, Transformers Doctor Who was literally Avengers Endgame before Avengers Endgame happened. Yeah. <laughs> That's what people didn't know, but like it made a billion dollars in the box office. Props to Michael Bay for that, but still it's like one of my favorite movies when I watched it as a little kid, but except for the fact that I got traumatized by the fact that um so many people got blown out because of the Decepticons. <laughs> yeah. They just got blown up to fucking shreds and I'm just like Holy shit! Actually, that happened. <laughs> I never, I never understood how Sam dies because apparently Sam and Wiki dies. I don't, I don't get it. Like, they should just—he should just like live with like a happy family or something, despite after all that he's gone through. And I'm just like, it's just so confusing. And that's why I skipped watching the last night. I know it was so bad to the point I'm just like, nope, fuck yeah, it that. Was, it was a waste of time. Thank God I did not watch it, even though my cousins did. Although I did buy last night Bumblebee, but then at the same time, I just don't. I'm not gonna watch that movie. Bumblebee was good though, but we'll see for Transformers: Rise of the Beast. But I gotta give it to the first five movies. They have one of, if not the best, soundtracks. Thanks to Steve Jablonski, and I have to give credit to, to that yeah, man already. Cause I I liked the I liked the uh, Lincoln Park. Ah, uh, Lincoln Park. Oh fuck, that that shit was good. Lincoln Park was good. The f- Iridescent and New Divide were like the best. But other than that, I also love Valkyrie from um, what was it Age of Extinction. But yeah. there's this one Lincoln Park, even though it's kind of like a, a trailer for like a game, which is if you know Transformers: Rise of the Dark Spark, and I know that like people say it's bad, but personally to me, I kind of enjoyed it. But it's more to, um, what is it? If you know until it's gone from Lincoln Park, oh boy, that shit is so good. It it literally is good. Like, when I listened to it back when I was a little kid, I was playing it non-stop every goddamn time. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just loved it to death, and, like, it's just, well... It's one of, if not, like, one of the best Lincoln Park songs that I actually, like, really love. To the point that, like, whenever I play Rise of the Dark Spark again in PC, I basically will. <laughs> I just play, I just loop that song. But, um, speaking of Rise of the Dark Spark, it's kind of sad that they don't have the multiplayer anymore and they removed it from the Steam store. But luckily, there's a way to actually uh, get the servers back. They already found a way to get the servers back up. So, um, more or less, I could actually try playing multiplayer with my friend. Yeah. Right. And it was hella fun. <laughs> it is time for me to go to bed. It's pretty late. Okay, tell me. Yeah. Alright, good night. Yeah. Bye. Night, y'all. Um. Just have a lot of good memories with Rise of the Dark Spark. Despite the game being a little bit of a mixed bag, or a polarizing one for sure. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Well, I played the very first one, and I think that's the best. But for, I also for Cybertron. Or was it for Cybertron? No, 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 no. The um. Of the Michael Bay movies. Ah, the, uh, the Michael Bay. Ah, f- uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, what the first it? one's great. Like, and the DS version was awesome too, because like the DS one, you can make your own trans, Transformers. And uh, actually. Yeah. Um. So like. What you would do is you would start out, like, in, in the game, and um, it was sort of like Pokemon, 
where there was a Decepticon copy of the game and an Autobot copy of the game. So, but when you would start the game, you would be in the meteor form, and you would uh, have to s- yeah, you would yeah. have to scan a vehicle to transform into. And then, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you would just do missions and stuff. But you could scan different vehicles and be any kind of Transformer that you wanted in the game. And it was on the DS, so, like, I haven't seen that game in years. But I definitely feel like, at the time, that game was just, like, super cool. And I just really liked it a lot. I thought it was such a cool fucking game. (laughs) And I remember, like, I never really owned owned it but my friend who was obsessed with transformers had it and i remember i would like play it at his house all the time um but yeah it was just like totally awesome like i thought that was such a cool neat thing where you can just scan different things in the in the open world and become those vehicles and stuff um it was just really neat (sighs) <sighs> it was kind of funny because if you didn't you could still transform but if you didn't scan something you would turn into the meteorite but uh, like the camera wouldn't show the meteorite it would be kind of inside of it so if you were to like get next to something that would move the camera a certain way you could see that it is a meteor that you transformed into it was kind of funny but it, it would the meteor would drive like a normal car. <laughs> it was really weird. Hella weird, but somehow kind of good. Yeah, it was super I, funny. I miss Transformers games, like the one made by High Mood Studios. I heard four for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron were like go to the shit. I've never played Fall of Cybertron at one point, but it was really, really good. Yeah. Although Rise of the Dark Rise of the Dark Spark for me was also a good one, even though I understand that. Some people are like, oh, sh- this shit is kind of bad because uh, it's the same. I mean, I get it. I get it. But it's more like, no, ma- no matter how bad the uh, no matter how bad the game was, I still enjoyed it as much as I know like its faults and everything like that. Because, I mean, I know. I get it. Like, There's some people who say it's bad just because like it's the same. But like still, for me, it's just like enjoyable shit. Yeah. I could have, I could have a laugh with like my friends just to, uh, what was it? when I'm playing on that thing, so. I never really played any Transformer games outside of the The Michael... The first one? Yeah. Um, and the DS one, like, Uh, that was about it. But, man, I miss Transformers games, because, like, ever since the High Moon license expired, or, aka, the Activision license expired, it's just basically a dead space land. (laughs) Yeah. And, like, we haven't even got a tra- good Transformers game ever since then. Yeah, I think the last Transformers game they made was, um... Rise of the Dark Spike and, uh, no, wait, Battlegrounds. Uh, no, other than, no, other than Devastation, it was, like, a game called Battlegrounds, if I'm not mistaken. Let yeah, was that, like, an Overwatch-type game? No, wait, no, it's not. Wait, hold on. Uh, no. Transformers Battlegrounds. It's like, a, it's like a tactical warfare adventure game. It was back in, like, 2020, and... <laughs> I just... It's just so funny how the fact that this is just, like, the game that they just... was it? They just have, uh, in, like, the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC. I'm just like, bruh. Yeah. Okay, wait. There's like, there's like a, there's like a category, category of like uh, video games. But the last time, it, when it was an actual video game, like a multiplayer one, was back in, um, was it was back in 2014 with Rise of the Dark Spark. Huh. Yep. I am. I am not even. I am not even joking. The last time, like they have like multiplayer. In the uh, Transformers games, was uh, was a fucking Rise of Dark Spark. Although the sing- the the hack and slash single player game was Transformers Devastation, 
And that's about it, nothing else. Although they have the Overwatch style game, aka Transformers Online, but they shut it down after 2020. Yeah, I don't think that game lasted very long. <clears throat> Although the designs were actually really good, like the G1 designs, like, even though they retained the classic ones, they made it like sleek and modern, and I kind of like it. Yeah. But oh well, it didn't even last long anyway, so. <laughs> Which is sad, but this is what it is. Yeah. Um, so I still, still have a lot of my, my Transformers toys in my house, just like, when I get back to it, I'll probably just play with it. <laughs> I wish Eric was here, because Eric really likes Transformers, but I guess he got off. Uh, uh, he was here earlier. Like, uh, he probably got off a little bit early, like, before I get in here, because I was, like, asleep, and then I woke up at, like, 7 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Um. But... Yeah, like, my favorite, I think, so when I was introduced to Transformers, it was, um, the Transformers Cybertron series, uh, it wasn't, like, I think it might have been Energon at the time, or Armada, but it was officially... Like, when I first ever watched anything, it was officially the the Cybertron series, uh, which was the final of, like, the trilogy. Because it was Armada, Energon, and then Cybertron. And uh. I, I have that whole thing on DVD, which I have um, Primus, or the Cybertron, it, Cy the planet Cybertron itself, that transforms into Primus. I have that toy still. I'm missing the spark though, which sucks. I wish I still had it. Mm. But yeah, that thing was awesome. I I have it somewhere in a cardboard box, but I just keep it in Cybertron planet form. Uh, I but, think more or less you guys like grew up with like the sort of robots in this guy's cartoon, the 2001 one, not the oh, god awful 2015 one. Oh god. <laughs> The robots, the, the Armada, basically. Was it the Unicorn trilogy? If I'm not mistaken, right? The Unicorn. That's what it's called. I yeah. I think I don't know. It's it's it's. I think it's a Unicorn trilogy, more or less. Because it was like for me, anime. I, it was anime and 3D animation. Yeah, more. Yeah, more or less. So basically, I grew up with the animated and Prime series. I, if you don't know Prime, Prime was really good. Like yeah, fucking good. I didn't like the art style for Prime. They look sleek, no call. I, I kind of love that, but just one of if not the best TV shows. No call. I. Yeah. Um. But let's see. Yeah, I loved Transformers Cybertron. Like, I have the whole thing on DVD, and I gotta rewatch it because, like, I haven't. I haven't seen it in, a, like, years. And I was watching that around the same time Acceleracers was out. So, it was really cool. Um, but, yeah, I just really liked those movies. and uh, mm. It's really sad, like, the ending. Because, like, it shows char the characters from the previous uh, shows. So, like, you see the kids from Armada... You see the kids from Energon, and then, like, the intro song for Cybertron's playing, and it's showing, like, all these characters and stuff, because uh. it's, like, it's the very end, and, like, they finally defeated, well, it wasn't really, like, defeat the Decepticons, but, like, they did everything that they needed to do, and they saved, like, because there was a big yeah. black hole and shit, and, like... Uh. It's just, like, they're leaving. They're all leaving and going back home to Cybertron. And, like, it's just, like, this big... I don't know. This big tribute to, like, those characters from, like, the previous shows and everything. And, like, it, it kind of just hits you hard. as like, damn, that's, like, crazy how this is all connected. And, like, it's really nostalgic. And it's, it's a, like, happy, sad ending. It's, like, I don't know. Bittersweet, more or less. Yeah, I don't know. Something about it is just like really cool. 
but um, I really loved the Cybertron uh, series. It was just really good. I liked the designs of the Transformers and their like special abilities and stuff, and the fact that like Optimus Prime got this super mode and uh, uh there are things like <clears throat> it was just really cool. Um, but yeah, I thought it was just an awesome show. And then like the Michael Bay one, you know, came out and everything. Like, I I think the f the first one's good, but Dark of the Moon is definitely my favorite. I don't really like the second one. Uh, I just didn't understand it. Like, that's the thing I hate about the Michael Bay ones. It's like the story doesn't make any fucking sense and like. I just don't care, you know, it's not like that interesting to me, so, and then they try to make it that like Unicron is Earth, and it's like, what? Yeah. You know, no, like, no, the, no, the fifth movie, mmm. Oh, uh, the, the last night? Yeah, it's, it's, that's why, uh, it's like, that's why I, I skipped on it, cause like, oh, I see a horn, what the fuck, you should've like just... Like, if he turned, if they turn fucking, was it, if they turn fucking Earth to Unicron, I'm, I would be so confused, because at the same time, like, we're living in there, and like, we're just gonna die someday in that fucking Earth. <laughs> like, just, it's, I don't know, it's just, the fifth movie just doesn't make sense at all. They have, oh, they have Transformers in the 1940s, and they have Unicron, and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, and then the, it's like... I think the fourth movie was, like, way better in terms of the fifth one. To the fifth one and they're yeah. like oh yeah bumblebee just lost his memories but yet he was on earth at this point in time and da -da 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 -da. it's just stupid like there's cool concepts like yeah world war ii bumblebee sounds fucking badass but, but at the same time it's fit. like it doesn't make sense you know it just doesn't fit like it doesn't was it it doesn't suit it like they have already they have already established like the first three movies, aka the first three movies, like, oh yeah, that's about it. Fourth one, yeah, okay, fine. But then fifth one, they could have done something better. Like, not that fucking bullshit. Yeah. I also, I just hated how the, the humans were always connected to the Transformers in some way. And it was just like, oh yeah, dude, this is the ancestry of this and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, no, stupid. no, that one is just, yeah, that one's just kind of retarded. Even like the fifth, the, the fifth one is just the worst out of the bunch. That's why, although I'll give due credit to the fifth movie, the only positive thing that they have is the soundtrack. That's about it. Yeah. Just the soundtrack, it's fucking good. But to be honest, the recent Transformers movies kind of lack in quality in terms of like the soundtrack because it doesn't hit the same. Ever since the fifth movie came out, Steve Jablonski is just if you know Hans Zimmer, Steve Jablonski is his student, and that's why I could see like this, some of the familiarities with these two, and that's why I like Steve Jablonski so much. Even Dark of the Moon soundtrack and Age of Extinction were my top two for me. Last Night is my third favorite though, although I don't like the movie, I like the soundtrack and maybe some of its toys. I have to give that one. Yeah. Although I wish, like, I'd probably get a third party it was a Transformer at this stage, because... Trans I mean, like, Hasbro, yeah, they're okay, I guess. Like, there's at sometimes they're good, but then at the same time, like, some of the engineering are kind of ass. So maybe I might lean towards the third party ones. Like how I used to be with, like, Hot Wheels back then, but now I just want to, like, change to, like, other companies like Tarmac, Inno, Kyosho, you know all that third party companies not really third party but more like other stuff for the uh, other other brands for you know other brands for the 164 scale and everything like that so yeah I agree um in your opinion uh cause I, I don't know too much of die cast cars outside of Hot Wheels alright um go ask me like outside of Hot Wheels in terms of like quality and such like Ooh. what what is your favorite brand 
so far, despite um, <clears throat> I haven't really bought like a lot of uh, third party was it one sixty four scaled companies like Tarmac. I I mean I would get Tarmac someday. It's just maybe not at the moment. Um, oof. I've seen Inno sixty four. Like I've ever like seen one in my in my hand. It is pretty small, but the details the best. Well, well, if not the best, but for now, I'd say Mini GT. Even though I have some Kyosho F1 cars, but I mean, like, there's some, I mean, like, they need a little bit more depth in their detail, but I mean, like, it's good for what's worth, because I get it, they are a small scale, but for me, Mini GT, because the execution and, was it? It's not really flawless, I'd say, because, like, there's, I, I know there, like, there could probably be some quality control issues or, you know those QC stuff like you know how how to just have like the errors and everything mm -hmm. to me like mini GT sort of like nailed it in the bag because at the same time like uh, how do I say it it's just like the the heart and soul that they put into these cars they're just like it's just amazing and uh, was it even though I get it that they don't put like some details for like their tires and all that stuff it's just Whenever I see a casting of it, it's just wonderfully executed. But I know I have a fear that like there could be some QC issues, but it's not much actually. Some of them are kind of like I, don't, I can't really explain it. Cause it's more like it's just they look good. Like they just look amazing, and even in person, uh, it's just it just hits way more different if you were to buy like a hobbies and compared to a mini gt side by side even though i like brands that like uh, even though i like cars that like roll mini gt the one that has like one of if not the best qual uh quality in terms of like the details of the models they could roll pretty well compared to like others yeah yeah i never really understood like why people that only collect license go after Hot Wheels. Like, I understand that there's a difference in price tags, but it's like the quality is so much better on the more expensive cars, and it's more accurate as well. So it's like, you know, I just don't... I don't get it, and I, I, I hate that... I mean, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but I just, I hate how so many of these people are so tone deaf to what Hot Wheels is as a brand. And it's just frustrating that all these people get to have this huge voice that Mattel only listens to. And it's just like Mattel seems to not realize like, oh, yeah, uh, you know. They're basically losing it all, to be honest. Yeah, it's losing, it's losing its grip on what it is as a fucking brand. It doesn't understand itself, you know, and... I just, I hate the excuse that, like, oh, well, Hot Wheels fantasies are for kids. It's like, no, Shut it's actually fuck some... Up. It's not, it's not, yeah. it's not. It, it's I, I collect so fantasies stupid. when I'm an adult. Yeah. And, like, I did have a problem with it, because, like, most of the fantasy castings, back in, like, the early 2000s or the late ones, they're really, really good. Compared yeah. to the ones right now. They, they probably only see the ones that are, like, made right now, because the fact that, like, they already have this general idea of like, oh, fantasy shit, licensing good. I'm like, what? I've watched Accelerators, you guys haven't. <laughs> or even Battle Force 5, as a matter of fact. Like, yeah. Battle Force 5, even though I get it that why Accelerators fans bash it, and that's one of the cons of being in the Accelerators fandom. I get it, no offense, but honestly, even though it's part of my childhood, it ain't that bad. And the designs, I'll give credit, they're much more better in terms of the designs and everything like that compared to the newer fantasy castings and whole oh boy and yeah. i hate the generalization of no oh, fantasy bad license is good I, I would really like if i were to give if, if someone were to give me a thousand dollars or no a billion dollars oh no better yet a reverb for me to slap someone who says that ideology i would be volunteer i would volunteer for that shit oh, my God. <laughs> yeah i i hate like um, so, like, I I am kind of annoyed that, like, I don't hate it 100%, but it is a little bit of a gripe that Reverb from Acceleracers got 
like rebranded as the site as the hyper truck the hyper truck yeah and you know battle force 5 which i like battle force 5 reverb i think it looks cool yeah but reverb, it's, it, reverb sucks that that that, cool. it sucks that that name got taken you know i mean why don't why not have two reverbs I, i'd probably be fine with that yeah i don't see one, problem re- with one, re- one reverb is cool well, I mean, maybe two that that probably would look better, but I think like if they were to re-release, like if they were to re-release, uh, was it Re- reverb and reverb <laughs> together? They probably have to designate one as reverb BF five. I mean, that's the idea I'd probably give to like the CEO, but I don't think they'd listen because they only cater to the ones that love the Skyline R thirty four, the fucking Lamborghini Countach. I don't know, just like license model bu- bullshit, and that's why I hate about Hot Wheels. No. Now they're just losing its soul. Like, even every fantasy model I collect, I I still love that old self. But now, it's like as if you're... As if you love the past version of someone, but then, like, when you see them right now, you don't recognize who he or she is at that stage. Yeah. I agree. Um, it, and you know what's really funny? Is what? that there's, there's two Hot Wheels cars called Rolling Thunder. The difference is that one is I, Roland, and the other one is Rolling. Wait, they're Hot Wheels. I need to check that. Hold on. What the? F- okay, so oh, what? Huh? Oh, Wayne Scott designed this. He's one of the old designers. What the? F- it's it's a little bit weird though. They have like models that like they just use like sort of almost a similar name or same name yeah. but it's just i don't know hobbyists ain't cool with it right now and i don't get it why it's like if they if they're gonna do that i don't see why they can't have two reverbs you know exactly exactly or even i don't know as a matter of fact i like if the models were like the same was it were named the same it's like why not Right? I yeah, I just don't understand. Like, what's the big deal? You know? I just wish that, like, Mattel would listen to basically what the fans want rather than what the consumers really want. I mean, consumers are just fans, but they're just artificial because, like, they're only consuming the product without any fucking clue of what the hell's going on. And that's why I hate about the state of Hot Wheels at this stage. Yeah. The- as much as I as much as I love the uh, as much as I love was it as much as I love Hot Wheels and I have a passion for it I know that for sure just I'm and- not I'm I don't I'm not the one I'm not the type of guy who likes the modern ones rather the past ones were just so much better yeah and I I hate like that we can't ever have what we want like. If we want like more fantasy treasure hunts, everybody ah, bitches one. about it. That one, I would love that. Like Asphalt Assault, but Super Treasure Hunt, sign me up for that shit. Or RD06 Treasure, Super Treasure Hunt, sign me up for another one. It's just like the, the state of Hot Wheels right now. The Rajan Express Treasure Hunt that came out for this year looks so good. It's like red. And it just, it looks awesome. And I'd love to get my hands on one. Mm, basically. Uh, it just for looks me, super cool. For me, I probably would want, like, a re-release of, uh, what is it? No, if they were to have a Super Treasure Hunt, like, the newer mainline, considering that they've made, like, the newer Cobalt six-spoke wheels, they should bring back, like, the Hot Wheels movie cars. Imagine if they brought back RD-06 with the remake Cobalt six-spoke. And also the fact that, like, I get it why they removed this due to budget cuts, but bring back that pop-out logo in the basis of the car that yeah. shit was amazing that shit was amazing like i had the cold flight well even though i got it from my cousin who got i got the golden cold flight with that same pop-up pop-up logo or the cutout logos that hobby just made back in like the, the mid to late 2000s boy i want that so much <laughs> yeah they're so cool too bad that budget issues are a little bit of a excuse to basically well 
remove that, so... <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they did the Push Pop logos, but I always thought it was really neat. Basically, yeah, I mean, like, it's just, like, my RD-06, it's, it's basically crafted with that, like, sort of Zaymac metal, and there's, like, the black, was it the black, uh, glossy, how do I say it? The gloss, uh, black chassis. glossy, uh, base. The chassis, yeah, the chassis around it. But, yeah, yeah. it's... It's one of, if not, the coolest features to ever exist in a hobbyist car. It's quite hefty as well. Though I'm holding my RD-06 right now. It's the 2006 one where it's... I'm not sure. I, I can't really differentiate between satin or matte. I think it's a matte black. If it's if it doesn't look shiny, it's matte. Yeah, I think it's matte. This one's matte. <laughs> <laughs> I just really, like... <sighs> I just miss those like old days where a Hot Wheels like actually caters the fantasy castings to a young adult audience, and I love it. Yeah. It's just well, was it? It's just well, one of if not like. <laughs> I I just enjoyed it, but nah, it's just. I don't like how Hot Wheels listens to like majority of like the fans who just want like license, license, license. I'm really sick of it right now. Like I don't hate it. It's just I'm really sick of the fact that they're doing this just because they're do doing it for the sake of uh, was they're doing it for the sake of um I don't know the people who really want really quote unquote want it, but they're just consuming product every day and day. That's why I consider it as artificial fans. Also, yeah. the fact that uh was it also. I don't really want to offend Lamley or anything like that, but it's just like, I'm not the big fan, I'm not like the mass, I'm not like a really huge fan of him. I used to watch him back then, but at the same time, like, the more he talks about fantasy, and even though he only mentions accelerations once, he's only catering to those who love fantasy castings. And what I don't like about his Paul is that, like, people mostly prefer, like, the Hot Wheels, was it Hot Wheels castings compared to, like, the third party ones that they've made like they are so much better in quality and detail compared to Hot Wheels who made it look like as if it's done but it's just half ass of shit but <laughs> I'm just so confused of like people just like picking was it Hot Wheels models over like third party but better quality models yeah I wouldn't even call it third party I would just call it like another company i i hate this idea yeah. that hot wheels is the only brand that makes cars like look sure i don't collect really anything outside of hot wheels but i don't ever consider hot other wheels companies just, uh, as like third party i consider them just their own thing like uh, a third party is something that's like i'd say a cheap knockoff you know uh, what i mean like right like those um there's Transformers. A, <laughs> there's well, a lot of Transformers third party figures, so there's a there's a um <sighs> what is it called? I, I forgot the name of them, but like there's a new toy line of die cast cars and they're kinda all made out of plastic. Uh they're they're just trying to be like Hot Wheels, but it just comes off really tacky. You know? Uh okay, okay. Makes sense, um, makes sense. But like I'd call that like third party. Uh, uh, let's just say other. Let's just say other companies, but they made it like as if it's better. So yeah, more or less. Because yeah, like really, if you look back at it, Hot Wheels isn't that good in terms of quality compared to others. Like, although their premium is kind of nice, it's just yeah, the quality yeah. is still a little bit mid. Like, like it's, it's some of them are good. It's just some of them are, but most of them are like mid. Like there's a definitely just like proportions that don't look right sometimes and it's like it, it it just doesn't make any sense to me that all these idiots are just like oh it's like dude honestly spend money on stuff that's better quality and you know stop making fucking excuses oh how like, this is better because like it's the only one i'm like what the fuck yeah it's like you you fail to look at other brands they're not they're not they're not open-minded and i don't get it why that like they're not because at the same time like bro there are other brands that have better quality control than fucking hot wheels and i don't and i don't get why like errors are like really rare and like they sold it for like 
a really expensive price to me. That's just like a jackass move. <laughs> Error cars? Yeah. I mean, like, I don't get it why, but I mean, I understand, you know, it's like, quote unquote, rare and everything like that. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a little... I don't really know how to put it into words, but like... Something about it... It's like I said, it's rare. Um, but... but uh, it, it definitely... Just, I think it definitely does make sense to kind of sell them at like... A bit of a high price. Um, yes. But it's... I don't know. It, it's kind of unique, but... Unique, but in a little bit weird way, let's just say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Reese sent me this... It was a picture of a defect, but it was like... The car wasn't even finished being made. It was like going through stages of being made, and mm. it like was not finished and it was I can't even explain it it's crazy but it, it's really just interesting um, uh, what should we call it um, it was just really really cool um, I'm losing my train of thought <laughs> uh, uh, wait I I want to send you like a sky. I want to send you like a picture of a skyline. I'm not sure if this is like a. I'm not sure if this is like a custom one. Oh, the, oh yeah. No, this is not a custom. This is another company who made the R34. That's way better than the RLC R34. Because you know I've seen RLC R34s, and you compare that to Inno64 Skyline R34. The fact that I don't get how it's so overpriced compared to a highly detailed, quality model that Inno64 has put. But then, the, <laughs> the Skyline R34 made my hot is like $60, and the Inno64 one was like 20 yeah. <laughs> I'm just laughing at how ridiculous collectors would be desperate to keep that car. Like, it's just a fucking toy. It's not a high-quality model compared to other companies. I'm just like, what? <laughs> right? Even like if people if people hear out my opinions, they're probably gonna bash bash at me. But I think I could get. I think I really learned how to like not give a single shit about what they say, what they want to say. So, oh yeah, look at this time micro quality. Look at that time micro uh, model that I send you on Instagram. Like that shit looks beautiful. On oh, Insta. Yeah, your Instagram DMs. I I I followed this account, but then like when I saw that sort of was it that sort of thing god and that looks amazing the opening hood oh, wow. and the engine the engine bay is much more detailed if you compare that to the rlc r34 it just it looks clean too it's beautiful looking like i like the the fact that it has actual brakes and you know stuff like that yeah most third party companies they actually have like the details of brakes other than no no but not kyosha though sadly but i've seen like mini i think mini gt do have like these uh brake details but i think mostly if you want to get that it's either tarmac 8064 and ignition ignition models oh wait my sparky has the brake detail if i'm not mistaken mm. i think i saw it not really but i'm not so sure because hot don't really have that brake detail and i don't get how people say oh hot Wheels is much more better than like any other company i'm like shut the fuck up Right? <laughs> have, have, have they seen Mini GT? Have they seen fucking... What was that? Sparky. Sparky. Like, they're they're releasing, like, 164 F1 cars, and I'm actually pretty excited for that. And, like, I just collect whatever that looks cool at Hot Wheels. But, you know, at the same time, like... <laughs> things look less and less cool these days compared to the ones before, to be honest. Like, seeing... Seeing fantasy models back then were, like, just, like, a pleasure to know that like i had a really great childhood but right. no offense no offense to whoever is buying fantasy models these days um they're kind of fucked yeah oh <laughs> uh, yeah me doesn't have break details i think no but i think it's only like 
much on the basic cars. I don't really see the brake detail in the Pagani in the Pagani's on the F. But I think mostly the cars with like the brake details, they don't roll that well if I if I heard correctly. But if I'm being honest, it's better off putting them as like a display model in like your diorama or your showroom or whatever you wanted to like was it wanted to do or I don't know. Hold on. Uh, I want I want to show you like one of this guy uh, this guy's uh, how to wheel swap in 064 or tarmac 64 because I think maybe um, you're all, you only collect hot wheels which which to me I understand because maybe getting like uh, other companies models would probably sound rare to you more or less but um, I mean or, I I know there's some like. The Mark III Supra, there isn't a casting for it for Hot Wheels. Oh, they're they're about to make it right now. It's just like no, that's um, the Mark II. Ah, Mark II. My bad. I, I don't know <laughs> the difference between those two. So, only yeah. do the Mark IV, Mark V. But personally, I prefer the Mark V better. You like the Mark V? Personally, for me, yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of Mark IV. I mean, like, it just I I don't know. The design doesn't look too good for me. I mean, I get it who, for those who, if, of you who grew up at in the Fast and Furious one, but it doesn't sell it for me. I yeah. just I just don't see the appeal to it. That's why when I see the Mark V, I was like, this shit good, but it would have been better if you slap a body kit to it. And that's why I bought the Slide Street, Slide Street Pandem uh, Mark V Supra. That looks fucking sick. Yeah, I think the Mark V Supra looks really good with like a body kit. Just yeah, just stock. It doesn't look okay. I guess I mean like, it looks okay, but the this the, was it. You slap the body kit into that shit. Mm. Oh yeah, I showed you the video of like how to uh, how to install Inno Inno model uh, wheels or Inno sixty four wheels. But what's great about them is that like when you try to wheel swap them, there there is that tiny piece of brake detail in the cars itself, even though they don't roll, in which I get it. Because like they're only meant for like display models and stuff like just play playability like Hot Wheels. I mean, because yet again, Hot Wheels are mostly catered to kids, which I understand. But this this these higher grades would have you know, they would have been, they they're much better for those people who uh, how do I say it? Just have who, them on display in collectors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or which or I, even like I agree. I don't like. I love that cars roll. You know. But I definitely, like, have a hard time trying to keep my cars from rolling off my fucking shelf. So, you know. Maybe the one that doesn't roll, it would bring, like, a refreshing feeling for it. Actually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Even though my Spark 64 doesn't roll that well, uh, like, because, like, the front wheels were kind of jammed. But I still kind of love that's just, like, a display piece rather than, like, uh, was it? It's my Toyota LMP, like it doesn't roll that well, but like it's it's kind of beautiful. It's like a display piece itself, or even like you put it on a photo shoot, then like you could just edit it whatever you want. That looks fucking sick. Yeah. <laughs> but if I'm being honest, uh, what is it? I wish Hot Wheels made more LMP. Was it LMP cars? But uh, <laughs> I kind of not like it. Yeah. Even, even though they made like Group C cars like the Sauber C9, the Mazda 787B. But what I really want them to do is... Uh, right. The LMDH cars. Have you seen like the newer Le Mans, uh, GT, uh, IMSA GT prototype cars? I don't think so. Porsche, Porsche 963, Cadillac, uh, was it? VLMDH, Acura ARX06. Mini GT are making like most of them right now, and I actually and I actually super anticipated to see w what they will bring out in 64 scale. Oh, okay. Like I see, like uh, I've uh, maybe if you ha maybe you haven't seen like the Cadillac was it LMDH, but I'll send you a picture of one to see how good that shit is. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I've seen those. So. Uh, all right. There's like three liveries for it, so bear in mind. There's okay. like yellow, blue, and red. Except one is sponsored by Whelan Engineering. Mm. Look at that beauty right there. And it's powered by a V8 hybrid. Let me take it. It's a Discord, by the way. Oh. <laughs> Let me go back. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Where'd you send it? Uh, Discord DMs. Oh. Oh wow, yeah, that is actually pretty sick. Just looking at that thing, it's a it's a beauty. It's one of my favorite prototype cars of all time. Like out of everything, like I really want this car made at sixty four scale. But good thing they're actually doing it right now and I'm yeah. really glad that they did, so uh, Yeah, it looks pretty dope. Oh my god, it's been three hours. Jesus. <laughs> 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 ah, it's okay. It's okay. It's but it was a really long, it, it, long it's fucking a good, podcast. It's it's a good one. Even though I came in late, I, I feel like I made some things yeah. late. All right. No, that's all Shush. good. I'm glad you're here because. Uh, I just I just saw you guys in the Uga Buga server. Like I saw the pings at like seven a.m. in the morning. I was like, oh shit, I had to, I had to get into it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm happy you showed up because like, I was. I, I didn't know what was going to happen, like, because I, uh, whatchamacallit, um, uh, Jordan, Jordan did a lot of the talking tonight, and then, uh, Blade kind of hopped no, off. No, I did. Uh, and then. And now, and now I hopped in and kind of continued it afterwards. Yeah, because, like, Eric <laughs> went to sleep, so, um. Everyone did. But, yeah, I, I even, have, even. Huh? Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say that I had an energy drink, so that's why I'm still up right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, energy drinks. I I buy sodas, but like not energy drinks these days. I mean, I used to not be a fan of sodas, but and I now drink Fanta these days, so more. Okay, yeah, Fanta's awesome. Fanta's good though. Like I kind of prefer the orange one. I I love orange sodas more or less. Yeah. Um, I like strawberry Fanta. Uh, and the first time I, I had I it, I try that. The first time I had it was like really bizarre. Oh hey, wait a minute. For me, it was back in like 2014 where I I, I thought I, I just drank it from like a wine glass. I thought it was fucking wine. <laughs> While it's back, it's actually a strawberry. <laughs> hey, can you see my screen? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I can't see it. You can. Oh, what, what is that? Oh, I'm playing Tokyo Extreme Racer. Ah, it's a lot like Wong Gone Midnight. Wong Gone Midnight. Yeah. I said, of course, that they have a mod for it, and actually, it feels pretty good. But I kind of prefer like the closed circuit ones a little bit better. I love how one of my school friends he act, like, you know, what I didn't, you know, like how I met my school friend. But then like he he's he's an Accelerations fan actually. But the way we met was like it was kind of anticlimactic, but hella funny. Like. When I was in the study room with him, well, because, like, he was in a, uh, he was sort of, like, my dorm mate. Not really, like, room dorm mate, but, like, he's in, like, the lower floor of it. So, uh, we were in the study room, and, uh, we both were, like, just, you know, awkwardly just sitting next to each other. But then, like, the moment when he's, like, uh, when he saw, like, that fucking screen of, like, the lock screen of mine, he's like, you know, accelerations? I'm like, hell yeah! <laughs> and we just started becoming friends for, like... More than four years after that, and it was like a really good memory because finding people who love accelerations is like really rare. And yeah, just like after meeting after meeting him, it was actually like one of, if not the best, experiences that's what it <laughs> of was, like my life. That's what it was like for me and Eric when we uh, first met. For me, it was like high school. I I, I met the, I met my, one of my friends. His name was Nick. Uh, let's call him Nick for now. It, it's just like we're just awkwardly in this uh, together in like the study room. Like, hey, may I sit here? Sure. Then like when he sees, sees my lock screen, I'm like, oh shit, it's like acceleration. So I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> Basically, we're still connected after like more than what was it more than three years as like friends or something. So that's at least it's something. And actually, I kind of loved it. Yeah. God, it was amazing. So. <laughs> Do you know what this car is that I'm driving by chance or no? Uh, hold on. That is not an 86. I know that for sure. It it's is a Toyota. Super, is it? Huh? Is it is it a Super? One of the older ones or? Yeah, this is the Mark Three. Ah, uh, yeah, guess the This is Good. this is my favorite Super. This is obviously modified. But uh, 
for me, like, I, I saw, like, the camera, I, I saw, like, the tail, and I'm like, no, nah, that's not an 8.6, because, like, I saw, like, the body shape, and, like, the front just looks way different, because yeah. I've already seen an 8.6, and the 8.6 one is, like, way taller and, like, more blocky, while this one looks a little bit more stream, like, the roof looks a little streamlined compared to an 8.6, yeah, like, a it, little bit. The, the Mark III Super is, like, a GT uh, car, so, and it I, I is... Would, it is a super. I mean, it's sports. So, oh. um, obviously, it's going to be a little bit more sleek. But as you can see, you know, it's definitely old Toyota. Um, you know, but yeah, this is my f favorite car of all time. This one is the two point five twin turbo. Um, so it's got like two hundred eighty horsepower stock, but this thing's upgraded right now. It's not maxed. But this, these fucking, I'm racing these two crews right now, and this crew and the other crew, they both have S2Ks, and they're so fast. S2Ks are pretty good, not gonna lie. Yeah, I love this game though. It's so addicting. Um, I got my friend Headless to play it, and he's like, "Dude, that was like one of the most enjoyable racing games I've ever played." Cause he, this is Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero, and he mm. played Tokyo Extreme Racer Three. I like Zero more because there's more cars and just more details. Mm. Three, they kind of sacrificed some stuff. Um, but, yeah, I got $9,000. But, yeah, I got I just bought a, a cord, um, which oh. I'm, I'm going to mess around with once I get more money. But, yeah, it's really cool. Like, once you beat crews and things, you can get their stickers. So, like... There's a this one guy called the Gambler, Street Gambler. So I have his, which is the the cards. So, it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it it's pretty simplistic. You just drive around, and race NPCs, and it's just super fun. It's super satisfying. But if right they were now, to make like a was it if they were to make like another Toyota was it, uh, no not Toyota. Tokyo Racing game, they should add multiplayer in it. Oh, yeah. And just, like, add at least something a little new. Yeah, I agree. Is there a Wanderer over here? Let's see. Yeah, this is an old PS2 game. Uh. Yep, there's the Wanderer. See, so, yeah, there's Wanderers who are... Is it a Wanderer? Oh no, it's not. It's another guy. But yeah, basically oh, yeah. it's like there's different crews and you race each member and once you defeat each member, the leader comes out to race you. And then as you oh. to to progress, there's a group of cars called the 13 Devils and they are kind of like the big boss. So like you race the small guys, race the the team leaders of those small guy groups, and then once you defeat enough of them, a uh, d 13 Devils member will race you, and that's how you, like, sort of progress uh. through the, the map and things like that. So, like, I haven't unlocked the Wongon fully, but I have the second only like, area unlocked. Only, like, some areas of it, right? Yeah, so, like, right now I have, like, the really small inner city freeway and uh, the somewhat outside city spot so you can start to pick up some speed. But as soon as you get, like, the full map unlocked, oh, it's so fun. Okay, so right now I'm about to race the boss. So this is the boss of Max Racing. And he's got... I don't know what he's driving. But it's cool, each each car has, like, a bio, mm. and each team has, like, a theme and description and everything. Uh, it's really cool. All the cars sort of drive the same, but they all have, like, personality that's sort of supposed to, like, reflect their driving Who style. They are. Yeah. That's about it. Um, and then your driving style affects your driver name so right now mine's fussy pusher <laughs> so 
So. What do you mean, pussy pusher? Like what? I don't know. It's just my driver name. Like. You push people off the road. <laughs> I don't know. It, it it just changes depending on certain things. Like, it's completely random sometimes. Um, uh, I've gotten some really cool ones, but like. Uh. Like one of them is like rich old man. Uh, it, it's oh, it's randomly generated. Uh. But. I don't know what it stands for. It's called BAD name. But I always thought it stood for badass driver name. <laughs> Cuz it's an abbreviation. It's B dot A dot D and then name. So, okay, we defeated the Max Max Racing leader. So now we've cleared out this area. So now, oh, and then your car overheats. So, if it gets like too hot, your car can't r drive as fast. Which is really uh, cool. Um, the thing I like about this game compared to Zero, I mean Three, is Three, all the cars like the the cars that just drive on the freeway, the obstacle cars. Uh, <sighs> in this game, in this game, it's heavily detailed, but in Three, they made it to where the cars like are all the exact same thing, and it's really boring. Like, they're just these stupid yellow buses. And it kind of sucks. Ah. Uh, but, oh, this is a Wanderer. Yes! The Wanderers are very hard because they... You have to have specific requirements in order to race them and they're one of the key components to like completing the game uh, and sometimes it's like if you don't have certain key components you can't race them but when you do race them you get like sometimes you get like bonuses of I think you might get a little bit of extra money sometimes you get their car ooh he hit it he hit an NPC car sweet ooh I'm about to hit that taxi cab but um yeah, the Wanderers are always fun to, to race against because it's like, oh shit, can I race against this guy or no? But like when you do get the race against him, it's like, oh sweet. Um, like some of them will be like, you have to drive a front wheel drive car. You have to drive a rear wheel drive car. It has to be this time of day. You have to complete this many rivals to defeat. You have to have this colored car. You have to have this kind of turbo system. You have to have this kind of part on your car. Like, it gets into that sort of details. Half the time, it's like... Oh, and you don't even really know that kind of information. Uh, you have to kind of search it up online to figure it out. Oh. Uh. Um, because, like, I think they sort of give you a brief, brief description about Wanderers if you find them. And if they reject you, you can read their bios and it kind of gives you a little bit of a hint. But it's not really, like, that good sort of thing, so... But, yeah, I just got... Yep. The Z16A. Sweet. So, yeah, some Wanderers, you get their cars. Oh, that's really neat. I never noticed that before. They added the uh, arrow system on the front bumper. That's a really unique attention to detail thing. That's really cool. On the Mitsubishi 3000 GT, on the front bumper... There's this little automated thing that, that comes down when you hit certain speeds to activate, like, better downforce. And, uh, they added that onto the, the bumper of the car. It's kind of cool. It says active arrow on it. It's pretty cool. Um, we have the, th the Mitsubishi 3000 GT and the Mark III Supra are two of my, like, favorite um, Japanese cars. Interesting, interesting. Twenty-five thousand uh, dollars. Wait, are, are you? Wait, are you playing it right now? Cause it. Why does the screen look like as if it's freezing though? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's Discord. Ah. Uh. Yeah, cause I am. I am still playing it. Um, I see, I see. It's just like it's just like the screen is just freezing on. I thought like, oh shit, they're not playing it. <laughs> yeah, no. Try it's, Discord. It's Discord being stupid. Yeah, uh, sometimes. I'm gonna 
upgrade this car. Speaking, speaking of uh, Japanese racing and in the highway, what maximum tune song you actually like out of like all of the was it all of the all the arcade games? Like I think it's until five DX plus for you guys because in my area it has six. Yeah, I don't know the songs. I just like the music. Uh. Like I don't know any of the names of the songs. Um, but like the music to the game is really good. It slaps. Like I'm listening to it right now. Let it shine. It fits f for me. Like I don't know why. Even though it like I, even though like mostly you'd probably use it like a high a highway race. I used some of the songs majorly to if I were to like play in like real tracks like Daytona, Sebring. Mostly in American tracks, not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. You know, Lego is actually making like a uh, Porsche 963 LMDH, and I'm actually all in for it. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, uh, was it Le Mans Hypercar? No, Le Mans Daytona Hypercar. Huh. How We're really up to get it, though. It's in a Speed Champions line, by the way. Oh. Six books in this game. I'm gonna put uh... Oh, wow, I didn't even know it changed the bolt pattern. That's kind of cool. Shit, I don't know which wheels I want to get. No. No, it's not too bad. Shocks. There you go. Tires and brakes. Haha. <laughs> you can put a bra on the car. That's funny. Bra, actually? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that with this car. I never really understood the point of the bra. Like, I guess to stop rock chips, but... You know. Kind of uh, just random, I don't know. Goofy random, though. Yeah. More or less. Okay, what's... Your stream, your, stream is kind of, your stream is kind of freezing, so I probably might just turn it off right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me... Just... Oh, well. Disable this. How do you turn this off? Oops. Nope, not that. Stop streaming. There we go. Um. 
Well, I should probably end the live or the fucking recording. It's almost been four hours. Holy shit! <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm still gonna be on here, but I'm I'm definitely uh, gonna end this because this is gonna take forever to upload to YouTube. But <laughs> thanks for watching yeah. or listening to the the podcast, everybody. Uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Anything you want to say before I stop it, Darren? <laughs> I would love to say subscribe to my channel, except I'm just basically promoting myself. <laughs> I mean, I don't care. That's fine. <laughs> All right, please. If you want more Hopios content or like some video essays that I might have made some while ago, you can check out my channel for that. And maybe some wacky stuff will come up later on. So we'll see. Very what good. All for us. So. Very good. Very good. But, uh, okay, well, thanks for watching, uh, I mean, whatever it is, I mean, there's, there's not really going to be anything to see on screen, so, uh, thanks for listening to the Law Falls AZ Podcast, see you guys next time.